information, a whole lot of truth, no financial advice. Financial advice. You wanna learn? Well, you came to the right place. You pump an AMC, might get slapped in the face. Get your due diligence, know who the villain is. Don't be a sheep when the shepherd's carnivorous. So come learn, laugh, and maybe you win big. And listen up, y'all, the wheel is not rigged. Everybody get a chance in the live chat. Kyoto spin wheel, you win just like that. Retail fight pack and this retail winning. Y'all just wait, man, this is just the beginning. All fellow simians, GME group singing the truth. We just chilling, infinity pool swimming. So welcome to my ranch ranch. A lot of knowledge but no advice on finance don't even need pants you can tune in naked like Kenny the mayo man internet's most hated don't want to lose your money then it's time for you to listen if you're ignorant invest in amc a superstition the stream about ready they told us to don't dance i do what i want welcome to my ranch ranch welcome to my ranch ranch welcome to my ranch welcome to my ranch welcome to my ranch 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 welcome to my ranch ranch welcome to my ranch welcome to my ranch welcome to my ranch ranch welcome to my ranch ranch thank you welcome to my ranch ranch thank you for hanging out with me on a Saturday night. I know you can be doing other things like watching, I guess, Tyler the Creator at Coachella. Terrible. I don't even know who pays for that. But um, welcome back. Welcome back to Morant's Rants. Plenty of good information. A little bit of motivation. A whole lot of truth. No financial advice. I guess history was made last night. Billie Eilish and uh, Lana Del Rey on the stage together. I don't know how that's the voice of this generation. It's pretty terrible, to be honest with you. But I'll leave it alone, okay? I live out here. You know, Coachella's going on. I've been studying the stock while that's going on. Went to breakfast this morning. Can I tell you a personal story? Now, you guys know we're going to talk about Moass. Listen, I don't talk about Moass that often, but tonight's the night. Tonight's the night that I'm looking real sporty. Hey, as a second on that is uh, the channel, the, uh, the Discord, made a new song. I know that we have the hottest fire when it comes to music for the GameStop revolution, thanks to the Wooch man. And, you know, we have Wooch and Real DMT and all inspired by this channel, you know, Morant's Rants. You guys have heard the tracks if you guys haven't before. Uh, we play from time to time. My theme song, the intro right there, Welcome to Morant's Rants, uh, that was made by The Real DMT. Well, we got another one. We got another uh, different type of song that I'm going to play uh, in between as we look at the stock, and I'll let you guys hear it. But it was made by the Discord exclusive for the GameStop movement. I hope you like it. It's called Under Your Bed. I enjoyed it. It's a little deep. It's a little Billie Eilish-ish. ish. But uh, I hope you guys like it. But other than that, uh, we're going to talk about some things that I've uh, no one's really paying attention to. Okay, and that's going to be the new short interest on GameStop, how it is an all-time high. From January of 2021 to now, it is the all-time high. I hope people understand what I'm saying. I hope when they see the numbers, they're not shocked. They're, they know what it is, because if you're shorting GameStop at this all-time high moment, um, you're, you're playing the wrong game. I'm just telling you guys, all you short hedge funds out there, keep doing it. I really don't care. I, I love the price. If you could get this price down further, I think they would try to. The amount of volume that they've tried to do this with is just not there. The FTDs are there, sure, but it's not enough to really spark my interest uh, because I know that most of the volume is off exchange. I know most of them in dark pulls. And, and I tell you this because I have all the data, right? So when you go to Fintel, no, I'm not the guy who pays for or takes data or Fintel data, but I can still show you the numbers that you need to see and how... Currently, they call it eight days to cover because of the amount of volume there, but over 65 million shares short currently. We have never seen over 65 million shares reported short. That is reported short in the history of this stock since January of 2021, guys. This is an all-time high today, and I'm going to show it to you and prove it to you so that people just can't say, oh, you're just making this stuff up, Marantz. But before we get there, let's go look at the stock. 
Here's the stock on GameStop, guys. 1077, all time low on where the stock finished. Now, I have a new support line. I, I guarantee you it's not going below that blue line. Um, 1077 within 10 years. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care one bit. I don't care. I'm looking at stuff. This is a monster of a chart, guys. Um, you can attack it all you want, meltdowners. And I say meltdowners, but I'm talking about shorters themselves. This stock is meant to be attacked. Uh, I've looked at it every which way I could. And, and as I go to the daily and I go to the minute chart, you see it here in the after hours at 1078 is where it finished out. Um, this chart needs to get shrunk down a little bit. Something, something threw off my charts earlier. I was, it's not that I, I'm not a TA guy. You know that I don't really care for the TA of a stock that's been shortened to oblivion. It's not my thing. But here's, here's the chart right here. This is going to be for the last two days. This is on five-minute charts. So the day before Thursday and then Friday when they finally attacked it. But when I say the largest short interest position ever, we're going to talk about those numbers. Um, but let's get there right now. All right, guys, straight to the juice, okay? I know you guys want the numbers. I know you guys want to know what this is. So these are, uh, this is Fintel. Fintel has all the information you're ever going to want. You guys can look it up for free. It's going to show you that GameStop's currently trading at uh, right here at 1077, nine after hours, which isn't bad for me. Uh, for all you guys, uh, I just read somebody in the chat right now. Go, Man, I'm stressed. The price is so low, and I'm worried about it. Um, and is Moas in the room with us right now? You know, you asked that earlier, Lee, and I'm just going to tell you, you're the guy who just said that you are afraid of holding at these levels. Your bags are so heavy, blah, blah, blah. All this shit no one would ever say. You know, no one's saying that. If you Listen, this is not a flight. You don't have to announce your departure. If it's too much for you, get the hell on before you get spit on. I'm not looking for a video from you to say, I'm no longer going to make videos about GameStop, guys. Like, there's nothing that you're doing that's going to affect me, so I don't even know why you come in with the negative stuff. Uh, but the truth is, nothing nothing gets to me. I'm just telling you it can't get to me. You can say it all you want, but it's not going to it's not gonna change the way I invest. Uh, I know what I'm looking at. I know exactly what I'm looking at, and so does Ryan Cohen. So does Larry Chain. You know what's the crazy part? Before we even get into this this uh, this data here, and we go over it step by step um, because it's it's all there. It's all useful data. I want to say something to the meltdown. I saw the meltdown. You guys have dedicated days and days of of intel against myself and the videos I put out and the stance that I have towards GameStop. And, and none of it's genuine, right? You're not trying to help anyone or save anyone. It doesn't work that way. You're just trying to bash the message and the messenger. What I haven't seen from the meltdown, and I want you guys to try this out, it's like when Larry Chang buys in for X amount of shares, where's the mass spam and publicity to talk him down or to say he's an idiot or stupid? Or like when Ryan Cohen is working for free and he announces he's the new CEO and chairman of the board and he can invest his own money, where's your post that tear him down for doing that? No, you guys don't attack the insiders. You guys don't attack the leadership at all. All you guys do is attack people that talk about GameStop to minimize or marginalize the information they put out. That's it. You guys are bullies and harassers on the internet. And I know, I'm a bully and harasser, right? I've talked about other people openly, but I put my name behind it. I put my face behind it. You don't. That's the biggest difference. And some guy tried to claim that I'm in violation of the First Amendment by asking people to put their name behind their words and what they say. No, nah, it's just, I'm trying to credit a source, a source, and trying to give you guys some credibility for your background and or your acumen. I can't. I can't do any of the above because you all claim to be expert traders, but then you all claim to be index traders. You know, it, it's different for me. It really is. But I didn't know that my investments were that important to you. I don't see any other subreddits built to hate on a stock that remains positive. I don't see the, what is it, Mullen Automotive meltdown. I don't see it that way. Hell, I barely even see an AMC meltdown. But it's more along the lines just pumping a stock that needs to be pumped. GameStop's not that. I want to make this very clear. GameStop's not that. But you guys can continue to attack me and the information that we put out. But it's factual. Because I'm about to show you some facts. Let's go. I only speak one language. It's not English. It's not Spanish. It's not Chinese. It's facts. Here we go. Shares that are short. Reported short interest is at 65 million shares are traded short. We all know that the flow is 305 million. Institutional ownership has around 30 to 40% of that locked up. So what exactly are you trading short? Well, all of the retail shares out there. It tells you off exchange, over 50% of it is off exchange, and you have 18 days to cover. That's based off of the ratio of volume per day, not that it matters. 
Um, you could cover it all in one day. Sure, you could. Uh, let's see the stock price move. How about that? So 24.5% is the reported short right now. Guys, that's a massive number. Massive number. If you go look along around, you're not going to find a profitable company, a company that has zero debt, a company that has leadership that they do and the following they do. And yet here you go, 24.5% short. And why is that a significant number? We'll go down and we'll see everything. Now, I've been looking at this. It tells you what the short squeeze um, factor score is, how everybody tries to say, is it possible? Is it going to happen? There's a score here, zero to whatever, 50 being on average. And it tells you that I don't even know what the model is. What did they give it a score of? Um, I don't know what the score is. It's not telling me the score right here. It tells you the numbers range from zero to 100 with the higher numbers uh, indicating high risk of short squeeze relative to appears 50 to be in the average. Okay. Well, what's the number for GameStop? Do they not give it a short squeeze score? I don't know what it is. It doesn't tell me here. But the raw number available for trade have not been shorted. Oh, cool. Uh, doesn't tell you. I will, oh, it's subscription required to figure out what the short squeeze scores. So somebody out here probably still has that and can get it. But these are the available shares to short. Up to 350,000 shares are available out there. Thanks a lot, BlackRock or Vanguard. Either way, doesn't matter. Short borrowing fees, uh, very low short fees. Um, borrowing fees, when they're high, as we've noted, that just means that it's a guaranteed short. People are willing to pay any price to go ahead and short it. When they're very low, they're trying to invite people to short it because nobody wants to short it at these levels. And so they borrow up for 1.5. That's fine. Um, that's an annual percentage and it plays out, you know, over 12 months. So it's basically borrowing the shares for free. And that's why it's a problem out here, but, uh, we're going to keep going down right here. So the FINRA short volume is the actual shares that are short traded. Uh, that's how much of the volume is traded short 56, 53, 54. This is absolute. It even tells him for everyone out there that does not, that's not what it means. Marantz. Okay. Then read this whole fine print for me and it'll tell you number of shares of short shares traded reported by FINRA includes both the exempt and non-exempt. And then it'll tell you exempt volume versus non-exempt volume. And what exactly does that mean? Uh, right here, number of share shorts sold that were exempt from the uptick rule. This is provided by FINRA. The number included are both the short volume and total volume numbers. So FINRA exempt volume is here. They're protected by the uptick rule. Yeah, but how much of the volume was non-exempt volume over here? So this gives you a total of the total volume and what's available to you. And as you read down this breakdown, what does it really matter? 72% on the 5th of April. Uh, guys, these are, to give you an example, other companies, other stocks might be 30, 20% on a given day. Not GameStop. GameStop's through the roof. 50, 60, 70, everything traded. You know that you're not buying, you know that you're not shorting the shares. You're not doing any of that. But that's not where I want to be. I want to go all the way down here. Fails to deliver doesn't really matter to me either because the amount of failure to deliver is right here, 10,000. That doesn't matter. That's on that given day. As you know, failure to deliver, FTDs are reported every two weeks. So we don't have the up-to-date ones. We won't have them until this week coming up for the end of March, and that's during the earnings week. I really want to know what they were. But as you can see, uh, some shares, 40,000 shares, 17,000 shares. Who cares? I, none of this is going to rock me. None of this is going to rock my world. Um, Here's the part that rocks me right here. Pay attention. Right here on the 28th. Okay, guys. Earnings was on the 26th. Two days later, the reported short interest for GameStop was at 65 million shares. Remember when I told you they're just shorting us down? Everybody says, really? How do you know? How people are selling? They don't like the they don't like the numbers. That is not true. Six million share increase from Week to week, right here, from 59 million to 65 million. That is 6 million shares increase. They went up over 10%. They doubled down on their short right after earnings. And it's not that they think it's bullish or they think it's going in one direction. They're forcing it to go in one direction. What was the last time we had 65 million shares short on this stock? I'll let you go all the way back. Let's go all the way back to 65 million. Now, this is because of the stock split. This is really 40 million, okay? 44 million, whatever it may be. But we'll go all the way back to a great number of 16. So 16 million shares traded short back in February 12th of 2021. This is when the stock was halted, coming out of the stock, and the price was around $40, $45. Right there, it's going to show you 32, 32, 64 million shares 
65 million, the same exact number that you have right now today. The last time it had a bigger number was the day after the buy button was taken away, and that was 21 million. What happened the week before that? 61 million shares traded short. Do you think that the whole float was 100% sold short? Absolutely. Absolutely. At that time frame. And right now you're on the cusp of what could be your gamma ramp, of what could be your MOAS. And what does that mean? World War III has to start? They got to start throwing missiles? They got to start announcing things to ruin this world? You better. You better because you got to show me what the hell's going on. Bitcoin loses $10,000 in an instant. Boom. The minute the first rockets go up, Iran, I don't know what's going on in the Middle East. I don't care. I really don't focus on it too much. I'm just saying, you know, World War III starts, whatever they want to call it. And guess what happens to Bitcoin? Gets rocked. Why? Why, why are people pulling out of Bitcoin? Why are people pulling any liquidity out of it just to pump it somewhere else? Well, we'll see Monday morning when this shit gets shorted all the way down again. And we keep getting attacked. Or am I going to buy more of it? I have to. I have no choice. And it's not because I'm drowning or because I'm upside down. None of that. It's the same thing why, why Larry Chain would buy him, why any insider would buy him. I'm an insider of GameStop. I'm sorry to tell you this. That's how I treat myself. That's how I feel about it. I know the inner workings of the company. I believe in it. I believe in the leadership. And I say, you know what? They're doing the right thing. I see everyone out there on Twitter shopping and buying. I see people on this Discord shopping and buying. I'm gathering information just like anyone else would. And I go, okay, there we go. It's, it, that's all it is. It's a community of information. Well, guess what? Here's the real information. GameStop has the highest short percentage that it's had since January of 2021. When they took away the buy button and it went up to $483 a share, the equivalent of $125 a day. You tell me what we're waiting on. Info? The right momentum? I'm going to keep buying. I'll make my own MOAS myself. But I hope you guys are aware of what the number is. The short score is currently 85.49. 85.49. Yes, it's going to happen. And you know what? Even if it doesn't happen, even if it doesn't happen, I know that I got these shares for the least amount that I could ever imagine. Why is it that the short interest has to go all the way to 40? Uh, well, I'm so sorry, up to 25%. 60 million shares traded short. Why does it have to happen when the price comes down to $10, $11? Just like it was in February. Anybody remember when it was down there at that rate? What happened in March? Does anybody remember when it was at $40 a share in February and it had this much short interest would happen three weeks later in March? Anybody? Show of hands. Raise them. The stock price went from $40 a share all the way to $347 in three weeks at the all-time low to what it is then. I've seen it happen three times in the history of this stock. Is this our fourth time? I don't know what to tell you guys. They reported this shit short 134%, 226% short. They reported all of it. You Have you seen this new CAT system that's allowing these new 13Fs to come out and you find out that so many institutions were buying into GameStop for the last 10 years and they finally reported it via the new CAT system? Have you guys seen this? This is the information coming out right now. You're younger than usual, it must be the hat. Yeah, Alex K, I don't know. I am young. I go to the club, man. I feel good. I'm like, damn, I still look good. All right. Still good girls looking at me sideways. Like, what's he doing looking so old? No. They don't. Like, man, what's that old man doing in this club dancing like that? They don't do that. It's not possible. Me and my wife, we're just out there getting it. That was last night. Yes. Um, important to mention that they changed the way to calculate short interest after January 21st as well. Yes, American. Yes, that has been reported. Um, Pepperidge Farm remembers. There you go. Uh, Wendy, welcome back. There we go. Damn. That would have been so much fun to watch. No, it wouldn't have, Amber. It wasn't because you were contemplating whether to sell or not. Back then, you were like, I'm going to sell. I swear to you, it, I put in some money, and it was at a high number where I looked at my son, and my son was like, Dad, this is where you sell, right? And I looked at him, I go, no. This is where I buy more. I buy more tomorrow. But um, uh, somebody said that I'm not transparent, that I don't give out the right info and because I don't show how many shares I have or something to that effect or how much I'm down. The rumors are that I'm down, you know, X amount of dollars. and That's cool, man. That's cool. Um, I don't know why my money matters to you, but I just tell you, obviously I have a significant amount of money put in to GameStop because, um, 
you know. I mean, after after 51 shares, it's all downhill from there. So I'm happy. But the Meltdowners, I, I read everything you guys write, all the comments you guys put in the video, so I, I like to answer them from time to time. But the number one thing is someone said, Tony De Niro, hey, Tony D's nuts. He said, um, hey, uh, you know, Larry Chang buying in doesn't matter. That's what he said. I was like, what? I mean, I guess that's the reverse way of thinking. You know, Adam Aaron selling shares it doesn't matter. I'm still going to buy AMC shares, right, Tony? I, I don't understand the way of thinking. So just so you guys are aware, I'm working on an interview that I'm going to be doing on this channel. It's a different interview than most. Um, I'm going to be interviewing a comedian. I'm working on it. I'm lining up a professional comedian, a guy I saw. And I, I've been watching his live streams lately, and I've been hanging out with him a lot. And I told him, I said, I just want to get you on the show and tell your story, how you made it in the, in the business. And he was like, yeah. He's like, let's do it. So I don't know. He said, DM, DM him and go through it. So I went through it, and we'll see how it goes out. If you guys see him here on the show one day, you'll know that I got that interview. Uh, he's a pretty good guy, pretty cool dude. He's into hockey, into wrestling, into comedy. And it's what I do to pass my time, you know, things like that. The price, bring, the price swings were wild back then. Yeah. I mean, think about it. You log in, and your stock's at two sixty a share. And you're like, all right. Remember, everybody's cost average back then was one sixty, one seventy, somewhere in the ones. So you're already up huge. You're already like, hey man, I got thousands of dollars in the bank. <laughs> and you you start the day and you're at two sixty, and by the, by three hours in, you're already at three forty. That's crazy, right? A stock going up that much in price per day. I mean, in the moment, three forty. You're not, and everybody was used to it because they were they saw what happened at GameStop, you know, the month before. So these swings are there. You had Sundial, you had Rocket Mortgage, you had a whole bunch of stuff running up and down, you know, and it was crazy. And for it to go to 340 and then down to 170, back to 260, all in one day, you'll never, you'll never live that day again. So I bought in at like 106 February 1st. I got some shares in the mid 40s not long after. Got my cheapest ones in the past couple weeks. I heard that, Stacks. $200 moves either way back in March. Yeah. Who cares how many? Yeah, I agree with that. It doesn't matter. I bought most of my shares at 160. Ali and Annie, yeah, I've been averaging down from 160. Uh, I'm now officially below that. I'm in the 25s now. So I'm at the 105, 104, 103, 102. And the best part about that is I went and saw Ryan Cohen's sheet when he bought in. Uh, again, he, you know, can I take it some? Somebody said, they always say, Ryan, Ryan doesn't have anything in this thing. He, none of his net worth or whatever. He put in a hundred, almost a hundred million dollars cash. One person. A hundred million dollars. Like he's a young 30 something. And what makes you think like that's not a lot of money? That's a lot of money, cash. To be liquid for a hundred million and put it in and buy in. And then take over and work it, oh, man. I I don't think people really respect the amount of money that they've put in. And Larry Chang, he's put in over a million dollars. It's not a lot of money to some people, but to him, it's probably you know an infinite amount, considering how how smart and rich these guys are, and why they're rich. But you have a lot of people saying that they don't know. Yeah, you keep yeah. So watch this, guys. I I'm gonna go grab something. While I go grab something. I'm going to play this new song that was built for this channel um, while I step out really quick. Just so that we're clear, the short interest on GameStop today is at an all-time high since January of 2021, since the, the buy button was taken away. I think that is significant. I think people should be talking about it, and it should be on, on the top of everyone's list. Um, I'm going to play a song that this channel made for the GameStop saga. I hope you guys like it, and let's get it.
relaxing and, and beastly beastly i liked it a lot thank you so much to the discord for making that track appreciate y'all um there's another one out there it's a little rough it's really it's really loud so i was like oh okay because i i heard it and i was like mm, okay i like it and then i heard it again and i was like yo it's loud <laughs> it's really loud but that one's nice yes thank you so much uh yeah we've been holding for a long time uh, i'm looking at the charts right now uh, here's the thing. Fundamentals, right? I just want to run this one by you really quick, just so for all the guys out there can, you know, I don't, I don't want to spend my time trying to prove people wrong. That's not what I'm doing. Um, what are you holding right now? I'm holding GameStop and that's the real thing I'm really holding like that I care about. So GameStop under 11 again. Are we, are we mad about that? <laughs> oh man, that's too bad. That's TikTok talking crap. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about this really quick. Uh, for the quarter, okay, GameStop had a decrease for the quarter from assets, almost 13%, $12.99, okay? So almost 13% decrease in assets, but the liabilities decreased 23%. That's always great. And the increase is total equity, shareholder equity, 1.23. So to go from 1.26 billion over to 1.34 billion, that's a great number. and, uh, and that's why GameStop's performing so well. Um, if you want to do the annual basis, just remember, top line on annual is the same at 13 versus the 23, and it's still there. So nothing changes because it was the annual, um, the report itself. Or uh, whenever you say, well, well, how to end, right? How the balance sheet end? The annual is the same because it was uh, reported that way. Like if you say trailing 12, you can still go to the annual because it's officially over, right? The first quarter, the first year. So right now we're in quarter one. And it is April 13th today, so you guys have around 16 days left to shop at GameStop for quarter one. If you guys want to improve, help out the balance sheet, the bottom line, the margins themselves. I don't know what's the highest margin item. I would anticipate it's a Funko Pop, and I'll tell you why. Listen, this is a shot at AI. If you guys don't know about AI, it's not the most talked about thing in the world. I'm not talking about that AI, not artificial intelligence. I'm talking about Alan, um, Alan Iverson. Okay, <laughs> if you guys did not watch Allen Iverson play basketball growing up, well, then you missed out on a cultural phenomenon. Like, I know that um, Steph Curry has changed the game. I get it. He's bombing threes and everybody wants to shoot him. But Allen Iverson, for me growing up, it was like he, the way he dribbled, the way he brought up the ball, you know, the one-on-one -on -one game, that was big to me. And that's why I play basketball sometimes. And so to watch Allen Iverson get his own statue outside of the stadium. Did you guys watch this? That st that statue is about like this big. It is they did them dirty, but I guess all the statues are small outside of the 76ers. Um but Adam Aaron, I want to know. You're part owner of the Philadelphia 76ers and I want to know Adam Aaron, why the hell Allen Iverson doesn't have a Zeus-like statue? 
And instead, he has a Funko Pop statue. I swear to God, he does. It was embarrassing. I was so embarrassed for him. Uh, let's read the chat. Let's go through it. It says, great song. Boom, boom, boom. Sounds great. Yeah, thank you so much. Oh, he said, unmute. I was having fun, man. Really, the whole world is owned by some, e some evils, the same evils. Sure. Sure. It's owned by private equity, if you ask me. That's just the way it's been going down. Some crazy ass Tim for I just thought of GameStop Ryan Cohen bought Bitcoin and they're taking Bitcoin to take AMC. And, um, yeah, I don't know. So I was listening to um, Whose House, right? We talked about this just last week where he was like, hey man, I think GameStop should buy Bitcoin because the halving is coming. Like they're having the price and they're having the, the uh, amount that you can farm. Everything's happening this month right here in April. And I was like, okay, so now we're going to take the price. Everybody's going to get in for a little bit more and it's going to go up crazy. Or what's the deal? Because it, does game shop should they be buying in on crypto i don't know i don't know i i'm not the i'm not the guy to make investments for them i don't know what they're going to do with the billions the 1.2 billion they have and of course whatever ryan has on the back of that but apple took a huge hit this this last two months apple's down to 2022 numbers right now and i only tell you that because ryan's the largest holder in apple shares so unless he was selling off his Apple shares, which I haven't been, it hasn't been reported yet. I got to find out what's going down. But I'm looking at 13 Fs everywhere. I'm looking for form fours everywhere. I'm going through everything I can on the Edgar system. I'm waiting for the announcements to come, guys. When they come and everyone says, this is what GameStop bought, this is what we get into, you can imagine those stocks and those investments are going to go crazy. And the day traders, the pumpers, the meltdowns, all these guys are going to want you to go put money in on those same said stocks. Right? They're going to be like, oh, you got to go get it because they're going to go ahead and pump it and pull it from you and, and create havoc. And the, the another thing that I don't like, I don't like the fact that people say, you want to see what Ryan, this is all over the the, uh, the Meltdown subreddit. It says, you want to see how Ryan Cohen treats his investors? Go look at what he did to Bed Bath & Beyond. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, he made his $60 million and he left. And I'm just like, what? Like, you're aware Bed Bath & Beyond got money from that trade. That's the first thing. Second thing. He announces departure. What the hell does that have to do with anything or anyone? The fact that he made $60 million and that investment is magnificent. It's the greatest investment of your lifetime. Everybody should be talking about it. Do you know how terrible Bed Bath & Beyond is? And it was. And it was manipulated and it was manufactured and it was done the way it was. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it because they try to paint him out to be something that he's not. He's not a villain. He's the guy who actually is trying to do the best for retail investors by working it himself. Here is the comment. It says, Marantz, I have been holding for over three years. Welcome to the party, pal. I have given up on Moask and treat this stock like Tesla. I got in a bit late. I hope to get some dip when I get my bonus in July. The whole I got in a bit late, that doesn't make sense to me. Like, did you buy it at 400? What the hell are you late from? You're still here. We're still here. We're not... When I say Moas, I don't know what the definition of Moas for you guys is, but that Tesla squeeze was Moas. That was a great squeeze. It was a fundamental squeeze. It went up because, yes, there was short interest on it, but Tesla announced earnings. Tesla then announced a stock split, and they announced the S&P 500 introduction. That took the stock from around 1,200 all the way to 6,000. 5x. GameStop goes 5x from now, and you're looking at a $60 stock. And guess what? S&P 500 and, and a whole lot. No one's, no one's over 50 on a cost base. So um, I just tell you, there's a lot of money to be made here at GameStop. And the more I put in, the better I feel. Honestly, I feel so much better every day I buy shares. I don't care what you do. I don't understand why these pumpers out here of misinformation. I'm talking about you, subreddit. I don't care why you guys, the meltdowners, put, paint me out to say, Marantz is pumping us up. I'm, I'm giving out info. And I don't give a shit if you buy or not. I don't care if you sell or not. It doesn't matter to me. I buy. I buy and I don't sell. That's the only thing I care about is how many I can get. What you do with yours, I don't agree. And I don't have to agree. That's the greatest part about this country. But I hate it. They're, we're going to put him in the same class with PiFi. I've been shitting on all those kids for years. You're just mad because we have supporters of the channel. We have people that watch, people that, you know what I'm going to do right now? Here, how about this, Meltdown? I'm going to do you a favor, Meltdown. I'm not going to talk about GameStop for like the next 30 minutes. 
Is that fair? Everyone out there now, tune out of the show if you're only here for Moass and GameStop Talk and Fundamentals and Ryan Cohen and Short Interest and Dark Pulls. Then tune out of the show. Because I'm about to do a whole show where I don't even talk about the damn stock. You don't believe it? Watch this, Meltdown. This is, uh, this is the following. This is the back. And these are the thousands of people that watch the show, right? Oh, they watch it to say what? I'll tell you. So, hey, guys. How you doing today? Welcome. Welcome back to Morant's Rants. Plenty of good information. A little bit of motivation. A whole lot of truth. No financial advice. So, last night, okay, I'm coaching the little cowboys. And my little cowboys win the game 7-6. to six, And it's not because we were the superior team. We just happened to know the damn rules. We didn't, we didn't run a play, and that coach looked at me. He's like, what are you doing? And I looked at the coach. I'm like, I'm getting a delay of game call. It's a running clock. I'm getting a delay of game call, and I refuse to run a play. I'm like, nah, we're good. We don't need to run a play, guys. <laughs> because he refused to call a timeout. He has three timeouts, and he doesn't know how to use them. And I'm just looking at him. And my, my players are looking at me like, coach, what are we doing? I go, we're going to win the game. Just chill, all right? <laughs> this is me knowing what the hell's going down. Guys, don't, don't worry about it. We got to call a play. What's up? We're up seven to six. What? <laughs> what, 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 what are we doing here? Like, you got to run a play. I said, no, I don't. Give me another flag. I'm good. <laughs> I swear to you. I swear to you, that's how it went down. I'll run a play when you can stop the clock. You couldn't stop the clock? I know the rules better than you. So that's the way it went down. The kids won, by the way. A win's a win. So after that, on my way home, driving, it's Coachella traffic. Guys, if you guys don't know about Coachella traffic, um, it's, it's notorious. 125,000 people come to this little valley where I live. We don't have enough bathrooms. We don't have enough hotel rooms. We don't have enough facilities to eat. We don't have any of that. You guys want to make money? Go build a hotel. Chill. So here I was, stuck in traffic, and I tell my wife, I go, baby, I'm going to get home. Because we were going to go to watch uh, this uh, dueling piano show, right? And it was in Palm Springs. So we're like, we're going to go tonight. Everything we do is free. I refuse to pay money for anything. I'm like, no, we'll go to is it free. Good, then we'll go. So I'm like, all right, get ready. We're going to go. This traffic is unforgiving. You got people just standing around in traffic. When I say standing, okay, they park their cars, they get out the cars, and they just stand around and look. Well, we're going to move in a little bit. <laughs> that's standstill traffic, literally. So that's Coachella. And all to watch who? Lana Del Rey? Trash. Holy shit. But it's summertime sadness. That's the one song I know. Summertime, summertime sadness. You see, you see Meltdown? I'll just talk about anything. <laughs> I'll talk about anything. You think I give a shit, bros? <laughs> you remember, I could do I could do a whole 30 minutes on my brother. Another 30 minutes on my mom and my dad. What do you want to do? So there I was. Getting ready. Go out. Playing TFT. Getting my ass kicked. Oh, TFT. I've come down so far on my ranking. It's not been a good week on TFT for me. I'm, I'm learning. I'm, le I'm learning the hard way. Anyway. Go back. Get dressed. Get in the truck. No, actually, my wife's car. Go in the car, and and as I'm driving, because of the traffic and the and the you know the cops and telling where to go, all this stuff, it's crazy out here. You can't can't get across the valley. I said, baby, we're just gonna go right here. So we went to a different casino. Went to a different casino, different nightclub, packed as hell. I'm like, what the hell? Why is it so packed? Coachella's going on, and they're like, yeah, all the locals like to go out during Coachella because that that everything else is empty, or I don't know how to explain it. And I was like, this is crazy. So there was a band there. Playing music, we're dancing, we're drinking, have a good time. Had some pizza late night, you know, two o'clock in the morning. And then I got home, woke up, took the wife out to breakfast this morning. We walked to one of we actually didn't we walk. We went to one of our favorite restaurants across town. I said, "Baby, here's the perfect place to go have breakfast. No one's gonna be there. All these Coachella folks are not gonna be there." And it, guys, we parked empty. Walked up around the corner. We walked around the corner. The line was out the door. Line was out the door. I go, babe, what the hell is this? She goes, babe. And I was like, how do they know about this place? This is a hole in the wall. And she goes, she goes, no, hun. She says, um, it's not a hole in the wall. It's on Google. <laughs> this restaurant's on Google. Every restaurant on Google, all these guys just going to Google restaurants. I was like, all right, we're going for a drive. We're going to go far out of town. So we went for a drive this morning to go get our food. We took off 20 minutes, more minutes. We finally got to a place that didn't have, it wasn't that busy. Ordered the food, got home. I went into a food coma. Yeah, I had a whole torta, right? I had a whole chorizo and egg burrito. I had another plate of my wife's food that she was finished eating. Guys, when I was done, I was just sitting there. I was like, 
<laughs> just resting. Just this is why I am the way I am. This is why I'm gaining weight. And so I lay down, and my wife says, "I heard you. Um, I heard you sleeping. <laughs> that means she heard me snoring. Um, but no, she goes, you were sneezing, sneezing, and then you passed out. I'm still passed out. So um, that's just the way it goes down, guys. If you guys don't know what's going on with me in the channel, I'm gaining weight in front of you. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try to live later. I didn't need motivation because I am motivation. There we go, Moran Sprans. Yeah, thank you, guys. Uh, anyway, that's how you do the whole show. Meltdown, do you get it now? Didn't lose one sub concurrent viewer. Just talked about me, whatever I want to do last night. That's it. That's why I do it. Hey, guys, guess what? All while holding GameStop shares, I was doing this shit. It was amazing. Walked around, looked at everybody, said, they don't have a clue. I still do that every night. Every night. I ask my wife. Every night, I tap her on the shoulder and go, hey, babe. She's like, well, what's going on? I go, none of these guys have a clue. She already knows what I'm saying. And they, don't have an idea. they don't have a goddamn clue about what's going on. And, of course, I'm talking GameStop. I'm still waiting for my GameStop gift card, uh, credit card to come in the mail. The minute that bitch gets here, I'm maxing it out. I'm going over to GameStop. I'm going to max that bad boy out. Oh, I'm just going to go like this. I'm going to spend it all, and then I'll pay the bill. No, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do, guys. I, I'm just talking. I got it just because I want to support the company, and it'll be how I do my transactions. A little bit more extra points. And, you know, I'm very conservative, so it's a little different. Hopefully the Melties run with that, our crazy cult DD. Yeah, it's our crazy cult DD. That's exactly it. With the song, man, they need a new. I want to know when they're going to make a song. They already made a bullshit-ass YouTube channel with Noisy Corex. And Noisy Corex is different. Can I tell you guys why? Um, because he makes comments on his own videos with multiple accounts. And I saw that being done by, um, by what was his name? The guy I interviewed, the kid I interviewed, Data Zero. Data Zero has burner accounts where he makes his own comments. Like, Data Zero is so awesome. He's so perfect. I love this channel. It's the most educational channel. The $50 I paid in the Discord were nothing compared to the amount of money I made off my trades. This is his other account saying it. And, he, and I know this because we used to communicate with that other account. He forgot that I know. So I was like, oh, he makes burner accounts. But then Sunny Corax, Noisy Corax, all the same guy, making all these comments on the, on the Discord. So I'm down to. The fact that maybe, maybe the meltdowners are just like, like 40 dudes. <laughs> At 40 dudes getting, you know, I don't want to say paid, but 40 guys going out and just talking some bullshit, trolling the internet. That's it. And they're making multiple accounts. And I, I don't get it. Because most of the followers on that thing are just people who, who want to watch and see what are the dumb shit they have to say. It's not that it's factual. Nothing they say is factual, by the way. It's all emotional. They'll clip me a hundred times. It's funny to me. Like, why are you guys worried about what I got to say? I'm, I'm stupid. I'm no, I'm a small, I'm a smallie. But apparently, you have to care about it. I mean, who else do they have on that subreddit besides myself and PP? It's like me and PP seeds, right? <laughs> and what's the difference between me and PP seeds? Anybody know? Other than, okay, there's big differences, huge, huge differences. But yeah. AI made the game fun to watch. Steph has arguably made the game less fun to watch. No, you know what Steph did for me, American? Um, here, here's a problem what he did for me, Steph. He allowed a 13-year-old and a 14-year-old to beat me in basketball now. Like, I'm a baller. I, I can post up. I can drive. I can shoot. I can do everything. I got handles. I can play ball. I'm one of the better basketball players. Well, guess what? It doesn't matter. These kids are shooting from half court. I have these skinny, scrawny little kids just chucking it up, and they don't care if they miss. They're like, they get a rebound, they're shooting again. You got to run all the way out there to defend them, or do you? I don't even know. They make one, they get like, they make one, they get like, and those count. Those count for more points than, you know, your layup. So, yeah, he changed the game all right. I'll even give him the title for the post. Morants and Morants think Bitcoin is tanking and tank games. Yeah, you can tell them that. I mean, for me, I think they started a war because of GameStop. Whoa, hey, tinfoil, just telling you guys, they started dropping bombs on Baghdad. That's a song, by the way. Sorry. Andre 3000, because the stock price should be 3000. Bombs over Baghdad. That's what they're, they're dropping, and it's because GameStop is the shit. There we go. Put it all together.
AI was the shit. He changed the game. He could give Kobe a run for him, uh, his money, anything. Uh, no. Calm down, okay? You got to stop this. AI was great in transition. He was fast. He was great, all that. But no one's going to be going to give Kobe a run for anything. Kobe played defense that you couldn't imagine. Kobe played offense you couldn't imagine. AI's not doing that. AI's just an offensive guy. You got to stop this stuff. Like, even LeBron last night got a still, took off, and did a damn 360 reverse dunk, whatever the hell he did. At 41 years old, yes, it is unbelievable. But people, see, they need to start putting respect on what LeBron's doing, what Vince Carter did for 20-something years, what Dirk has done for a amount of years, and Kobe did for 20 years. Like, they've all played a long time, and they've all done great things. But Kobe didn't play for his first three years, so his numbers don't look as great as some, and, and people don't give him the credit he should. But he, he stuck it out. He stuck it out, and he's one of the – he is for me. He's the greatest to play basketball. The greatest I've ever seen in my life, and I saw him play. Um, yeah, but no AI. AI is nice. He's nice, but you know, so is uh, Drew Holiday, and um, who's that other little guy right now? Ja, ja, John Romant, John Romant, whatever. Ja Morant, same thing. If GameStop ran to one thousand, no one is selling. That is my DD. Dart, tell me any meltdowner. Um. If GameStop ran to a thousand, would I sell? I'm gonna be honest with you. If it ran to a thousand, I would probably sell around 500 shares. Just a quick half a million in my pocket. Not a thousand. I don't want to. I don't want to sell a thousand and then be like, "Oh, there's a million. because it doesn't work that way for me. Because, eh. But I only have 51. Yeah, I'll tell you, it runs to 1,000. I'm selling 500 shares. That's all I'll sell. Because I can live off of that for a while. Buy the rumors, sell the news. Bitcoin having has uh, been priced in already, and profits have been taken. There you go. I'm not selling till generational wealth. Well, that can happen at around 2,500 for me. If I get 2,500 a share, we're having a different conversation. Whether Mo asked or just, but you know what? The chances are, American, I'm not going to need money after that. See, at like $1,000 a share, I don't need money. I don't. Because I'm pretty sure there's some people here that are going to buy me a beer the rest of my life. So I'm just going to get drunk and chill. And I'll just die off of that. I'll be good, man. I'm going to go out like a champ, like my grandfather. Yeah, my grandfather died at 66. Still had, a, had a, still had an impact on me. But he's a baller, bro. That guy was smart. You knew... Do you know how, like, I knew my grandfather was, was somewhat successful because, you know, like, growing up the way we did um, in, in the 1980s and 70s, um, most families, you knew how to, like, measure their success. Like, I knew how to measure my success with my friends and family. Like, when my friends would invite me over and they had a computer and they had America Online, I was like, yo, that was crazy back then. You, you got America Online? What? And I remember when I first convinced my parents to do it, my dad was like, what are you doing? What, what, what are we doing? What are we doing? My mom was like, not with it. Like, no, 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 no. What if, what if something happens and we need the phone line? Like, just pick up. It'll, it'll connect. It'll disconnect. But that's how you used to gauge, like, if you had money for your friends, you know, you'd be like, yeah, mom. It's not like, man, mom, hey, dad, the mom drives a Lexus. No, it wasn't that. It was, hey, they got a computer. They got America Online. But growing up, when you were, like, in the 80s and 90s, like, early 90s, if you went to your friend's house and they had encyclopedias, holy shit. Uh, encyclopedias, guys. Google for the 80s kids, okay? The real shit. So, um, yeah, if I went over to the house and they had encyclopedias, I knew it was up. My grandfather had a new encyclopedia set every two years. It was like that man. You guys don't know this. If you guys are young and you guys don't know, there used to be people go door to door and sell you encyclopedias. That and Kirby Vacuums. I'm not joking. You know the game Kirby? We sucking up everything, the big purple guy? That game's so successful and famous to kids, but they have no idea. That's just a vacuum. You know Dyson? Yeah, well, Kirby, punks. So Kirby was it. And um, and so they used to sell encyclopedias door to door. But if I would go to my friend's house, they had encyclopedias on a bookshelf, let alone they had a bookshelf. Shit. So I remember that. I also remember doing my homework. At the library with encyclopedias. Absolutely impossible. 
But the best part about the 80s and 90s was if you were doing a book report, you could take a book and plagiarize the whole damn thing and nobody knew. You could take a whole, just take the back of the book and <laughs> write that down. Let that be your, your entry. Go to the back of the book and take the last final page, write that down, be your exit, and fill some shit up in the middle. You could do it. I promise you. I did a whole 14 pages on JFK getting shot. And my teacher said, wow, this is well written. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you know. Riverside County Library. I don't know what book it was. That was the difference. Doing homework by hand. My son now. My son. Oh, what a. These guys, and it's not just my son. I can't blame him. It's the culture. It's the generation. These kids pass around homework assignments via their phones. He's like, I go, son, you do your homework? He goes, yeah, dad, I just got to check my answers. <laughs> I said, excuse me? He goes, I just got to check my answers. I got a picture of what my friend, my friend got an A on it. And uh, I just got to check the C. <laughs> I was like, what? He's like, yeah. I go, so you're copying? Like, how are you learning anything? He's like, no, no, no. I already did it. <laughs> like, oh, okay. It's like me taking my, my, uh, my, um, my gun permit test, right? I go in to take the test for the gun permit, and I missed one question. Miss one question out of 30, you can miss up to, up to seven. And the guy goes, I think you're going to pass because you're a military veteran and you know your stuff. I was like, yeah, of course I'm going to pass. He's like, well, we have, they have everybody retesting because the state of California changed some laws. And I was like, oh. Well, I didn't know Gavin Newsom changed these laws, but let's go ahead and do the test. I'm down. And I'm reading the test out loud. Reading the test out loud to the, to the test guy. And he's like laughing because I, it sounds so ignorant to say it out loud. When, when, un, when unloading a weapon, how can you tell if it's empty? Uh, point it at a target and pull the trigger. Uh, look in the barrel. <laughs> I was like telling him every, I'm reading, I'm like, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. But is it? Because the people fail every day. People fail every day. Listen, it is a, your Second Amendment is very, it's necessary, okay, to protect you and your family. Um, if you don't have a, a, a card, I forget what the card's called. I have one, um, the card where you carry and you can buy firearms, you know, you can do all this stuff. It, it's a very prideful moment for a lot of people. I don't know where the hell my card is. I have one somewhere, but you go in there and you, and you tell these guys, listen, man, you should, everyone should have a way to protect themselves and their family. Cause you never know who's going to knock on the door. Right. Or you never know what's going to happen. And this is one of those moments where people tell you bullets are more valuable than gold and dollars. And I'm not one of those guys. I'm not one of those. You should have seen this guy. I was talking to a guy last week. And he goes, hey, man, I need to buy some ammo. And I was like, okay, we can go, we can go down. We can, we can call so-and-so. Like, I know a guy who's an actual arms dealer who does all this stuff. He's my guy. He's my connect. And um, you call him, and he'll get you anything you need. He got to fill out the forms. He's legit. You know, there's waiting periods on stuff. But as far as and people don't know this, if you're going to buy, like, let's just say we're going to buy nine mil ammo, right? You have to have a nine millimeter gun registered to you. You cannot buy ammunition for guns that are not registered to you. So there's no stockpiling ammo, not in the state of California, at least. I don't know what they do in Arizona or any other state, whatever it may be. But state of California, you can't. So I was like, okay, man. I'm like, hey, I call him up. I'm like, hey, man. I need some, uh, I need some M9 ammo. I need some 9 mil. And he, and he goes, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. How much you need? I was like, well, you know. Before I could even say, it, just give me 100. You know, just give me two boxes. Like, he goes, well, I got about 4,000 available right now. You need four grand or what? What do you need? And I'm like, yo, bro, what the hell? What the hell? First off, in California, the magazines are only 10 rounds, okay, max. So what am I going to do with 4,000 rounds? How many clips do I got to have load? How do you, how are you? Let me, let me show hands. How many of you have loaded a gun before? And I'm not talking about put the clip in the holster. I'm talking about taking the bullets and put them in the clip. Your fingers will be numb after about seven clips, eight clips. In the military, it's very easy because you have a 5.56 round, right? The actual projectile round from the M16A2 rifles, M4 rifles, whatever it may be. So you're able to put them in 30 round clips. So you're just smacking them in, click, 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 very easy. There are some easy loaders that allow you to easy load too on other handguns and stuff like that. But if you were there with your thumbs, bro, and you let's just say you had your 10 shots that you fired and someone's going, bro, you might as well throw the gun at him. 
and get to running and get to you know throwing the hands because there's no way you're gonna reload. You ever seen the movies? Of, I just let me reload real quick. How? What? <laughs> you got ten shots, bro. That's why I tell you, take your time. Target with, target with acquisition, trigger squeeze, breathing, and, and pray. That's what you can do. But um, but I hit. I hit. You guys seen the video? I don't know if you guys see the video. I hit. I'm expert weapon call when I was in the military. Top gun in my unit. Top gun. All this bullshit. And you know when I was a uh, soldier of the year, all that crap. And you have to go to all these competitions. But you ain't getting you. I told my brother in law. He was like. Bro, I know I missed all the shots. It's like, but they, the target gets bigger as it gets closer. That's what he tells me. So if it's running at me, I, I just keep pulling. And I'm just like, bro, try to hit him over there, okay? Don't let him get to you. 20 foot roll, man. The amount of time it takes to cover ground in 20 feet and you pull up a weapon and target acquisition, breathe and sugar squeeze and pull and make sure you're hitting the center mass. Um, you can't do it in that time. That 20 feet rule is real. You will, you will have a problem in front of you. So. Uh, certainly if there's someone trained that knows how to take away a weapon from you. So, um, yeah, they don't treat you all that. At the damn range, they don't teach you that when you're going to buy weapons. So those carry console um, permits, too, in the state of California, practically impossible. But, you know, you know your boy. <laughs> you know how it goes. There, are we done talking about nothing? We didn't talk about the stock at all for like 30 minutes, man. Shit, I wonder why people are here. Oh, they're only here for generational wealth. That's my fault, guys. Sorry. A thousand dollars, and I will sell a hundred of my shares for a hundred grand. Go on and go on a vacation. That's what I'm talking about, Ammo. See, we talked about it. Ammo and I have the, had this conversation. You guys ever have those conversations in the car with your with your wife? And you guys are like, yo, baby, if we win this billion dollars right now on Power Lotto, here's what we're about to do. <laughs> you guys ever have that conversation? My wife had a full on. We had a full on strategy session because we bought a two dollar lottery ticket the other day for a billion dollars, and so we grabbed a piece of paper. And we started jotting down. My wife and I sat down. This is how retarded. I, I shouldn't say that word. This is how This is how dumb I am. Okay. Oh, my God. I didn't mean to say the word. I'm sorry, TikTok. Uh, TikTok is very emotional about, about words. And I apologize. I should speak differently. Um, so this is how ignorant I am. I went and I got a piece of paper. <laughs> Yo, mama, listen. We got a billion dollars. Taxes. One lump sum. In the pocket. After 1.2, 1.3 billion. Lot of, we take home about 490. So what do you want to do with the 490? She's like, okay, so we're gonna start up our own business. We're gonna do this. And she starts talking and she's like, okay, here's our employees. And I'm writing them down. All right, what about your friend? Your best friend? Yeah, okay, we'll put her down. What about so and so? No, we don't need to hire her. Okay, she don't need no job. Okay, what about friends and friends? what about cousins? No, they don't give us, they would would and my wife always does this. Would they give you something if they won? And I'm like, yo, shit. <laughs> Mama's right. They might not not give me. They might, they might not give me something, but that doesn't mean that I won't give them something. See, I'm a different guy. I, they're not me. It's okay. But I'm a loving man. So I'm saying, nah, mama, we're taking care of everybody. Everybody in the club getting tipsy, literally. So I was like, all right. So I wrote it all down. My wife and I did this while we were on vacation in the hotel room watching March Madness. And I'm like, all right, babe, how much for this person? How much for this? What kind of car? What kind of house? What kind of... Hey, <laughs> that wasted two hours. So you guys think that I'm crazy when I'm over here fantasizing about Moaz and, and how GameStop's going to take off? Can you imagine how long I've been role-playing this shit with my wife? Literally, my wife told me today while we were ordering the breakfast, she said, you have been telling me this for three years because I'm telling her something, right? I was like, hey, mama, check it out. Six months from now, we're going to be good. We're going to be Gucci in a year from now. She's like, what do you mean? What does that mean? I go, babe, what are you talking about? Listen, I get this because I got a raise at work, okay? So I go, I got a raise. I got this. I got that. I'm telling her, right? Axelrod just ruined my whole story with the text. How many deployments did Morantz do in Iraq and Afghanistan? I think Morantz owes, public, owes National Guard Reserve soldiers a public apology. What? <laughs> SpongeBob. Chances are you're not a you're not a veteran, okay? Chances are you're not a veteran, but when you become one, then we'll have a real conversation about it. But I'll leave it alone. I'm telling you, man, you gotta leave me out of this, please. Don't do it. Don't do it. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> you know, there was a time, there was a time in America, and I can say this respectfully, 
where there was one family that had four soldiers deployed overseas during war times. One family, four soldiers. My dad did the interview. Like, you need to stop. We have two senior leaders in the whole damn National Army, active duty, E8s and above, two in my family. Hmm. And I'm talking about brothers and sisters. I'm not, how the hell does that happen? Bro, you, you miss, you're talking to the wrong family, man. I'll leave it alone. I've already shown my orders. Did I show my orders? When I made sergeant at 19 years old, for 23 months time and grade, soldier of the year, fiscal year 2003, MACOM soldier of the year. No. Question everything you want. I'm good, man. I don't owe you anything. And I don't owe National Guard or reservists. Anyone who's active duty in the Army will talk the same shit that I'm talking. Weekend warriors and people that sign up for National Guard don't mean shit to me. Sign in for the real deal. Put your hand up and go serve. Go. Run. Good. When you're in your unit, you talk shit to them. You let them know what's up. That's it. That ain't you. Then you're not down for it. It's a brotherhood. I guarantee you this. I'll give them more recognition and respect than I'll ever give you and your super chats for two bucks. The reason why we get to sit here and have these conversations on the internet and when I turn real out of nowhere is because your ignorance and the way you talk. Remember this. There are people out there that have sacrificed their life and their free time and their freedoms so that you can have them right here on the internet and troll the way you do. I've sworn in twice. What have you done? Anyway. Cry them from my cold, dead hands. Yes, just go away and May is coming. Uh, also, go away and May is coming? I don't know what that means. I think the peak will be near $1 billion per share. No one is diamond hands enough to turn that down. Um, I won't be... A, a H.A. Prime, at 5000 a share. Oh, my God. That's all I can do. No, bro, you're crazy. You're crazy, guys. I'll never make it. I'll tell you right now, I'll never make it past. I, I won't. I can't make it past two, two grand. I told this to Jason the other day. Jay was hitting me up, and I was like, yo, Jay, I'm not making it past two grand, bro. There's no way. No, why? What the hell? I can't take it with me. <laughs> Woo, 51 shares. Hey, thank you for following me. That's cool. Over here on TikTok. Appreciate you guys. Just came in here from over on YouTube to say, what's up? No, no, appreciate you, man. Appreciate all the follows and the likes and stuff from YouTube. YouTube is big for me. I like YouTube. The other thousand or so is going to take more, way more than that. I heard that, Ammo. You know what's up. Bad, bad, the man will cause the squeeze. What the? F Astro. Th that doesn't exist anymore. It's B B B Y Q. Q, Q, Q. Cry, cry, cry. It's never going to happen. Google, go away in May. Oh, okay. Check it out. Bed, Bath, and Beyond got squeezed. There is no juice left there. Silly price predictions are starting to sound a lot like Al from Boston. What's this narrative now? Ah, uh, well, Satoshi, here's the problem. Me and Al, a little different. I'll tell you why. I'm not sexting anybody. Uh oh. Someone's at my door. Uh oh, I'll be right back.
Hey guys, we got to have this conversation right now. This is absolutely amazing. Okay. Thank you for hanging out. The doorbell rings. Okay. All I hear is Coachella. Right? The, the shit's pumping. You can hear it from my house. You can hear Coachella from my house. Walk outside, it's just boom, 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 boom. Crazy, right? Don't care. That's a delivery guy. My wife has been getting groceries delivered to the house via Walmart deliveries. And I think it's like 10 bucks a month is what it costs to be a member or something. I don't even know how it works. All I know is she said to me, the convenience of not having to go, they shop. They deliver. That's it. She goes, so I pay like an extra 15 bucks. She's like, who cares? So look where I'm at. She's in the bed right now watching Netflix. She's just chilling underneath a heated blanket. She would rather do that than go to the store. Nobody wants to go to the store. Well, shout out to the guys, man. You know, the guys delivering shit. That's awesome. I'll be long gone before then, Hap. Yeah, long gone before one, 1 billion. Yes, Dax knows what's up. Um, for all you guys who take off before then, before a billion, um, me included, we, we just got to meet up somewhere, bros. That's it. Because, I mean, shit, we got too much. He said, let a man dream. That is ridiculous. A billion dollars. Get out of here. I bought Tesla on the low like three weeks before this we started. Cool. And sold at the top. Ray Pizzas, man. That's amazing. I mean, it has to be the idiosyncratic risk to the entire market, so anything is possible for GameStop. It's more manipulated and shorter than Tesla ever was, so I'm sure it will squeeze even more violent. We'll see how it works out. We'll see. I'm down, I'm down for it all, though. GME has done the same as AMC. Ooh, that's bad. Alpha Omega, you're completely wrong. Completely wrong. GameStop has not diluted their float. To the tune of 2.6 billion shares. You're, you're absolutely wrong. Yes, Dax, it was the first uh, investment I ever did and thought I was genius. Dollar cost average, this is the way. Michael Tucker, I agree. I'm buying. Give us the motivation every day. Shit, I want those chumps to sell. I don't want weak minded fools holding shares of the same great company as me. I don't want those clowns having votes. Yeah, I'm with you on that, Stacks. All these dudes in the Meltdown, they don't have a clue, man. They, you know, for, I'm, I'm pretty convinced that everyone in the Meltdown has GameStop shares. They all have them right there just talking their shit. They're disgruntled investors. But I really think they have the shares. Rance, how many years did you serve in the military? Adrian Cruz, enough. Is that fair? Enough. I collect GameStop shares. Uh, people spend money on lots of different things, yeah. Yeah, Adrian, I don't like to, to get into... Like when people start trying to get more information about me, because the more information I give about me, like my job, everything, it's led to me having to deal with more bullshit. So it is what it is, bro. I'm not running off my military career here. I'm running off the information that I give. Uh, he had no idea. Just Google it. Got it. 100% stacks. Bro, I asked if you, if they was ready. Remember to give the Cinemark gift card to the MIP of your team. Yes, Brian Titties, I know. I do still have it. We talked about that. Just picked up 500 more moon tickets. Straight DRS book. See you on the moon, millionaires. KR, KR appreciate that. Uh, I don't need motivation because I am motivation. <laughs> They're saying that's what I say. I have 51 video games. That's cool. Amen, Marantz. Well, thank you so much, man. Charlie, you're welcome. Doing my thing, babe. Summertime Sadness, one of the worst songs ever made. Yes, I agree. I definitely agree with that. I don't understand why GameStop sold off the, the company made a profit. Sold off when the company made a profit. Uh, Michael Anthony, you got to know. Yeah, it's not, it's not that they sold off. I just showed, I showed it to you at the beginning of the show. GameStop is being shorted the most it's ever been shorted in the history of this damn stock in the last three years. The short interest on GameStop is an all-time high since the day the buy button was taken away. January 29th. 2021 buy button was taken away on the 28th of january but by the 29th that short interest is the on par and equivalent to what is reported today so people have to know what happens when they announce a profit these guys double down and, and crippled the price they want to make you convinced that this stock is dying the company's dying so they've unleashed everyone 
hell hell on earth is unleashed upon you right every every article you read is GameStop's dying it's done it's gone sell now it's a terrible company and they think everyone's selling no one's selling i'm telling you no one's selling because i talk to a lot of people i talk to a lot of people on via the chat in the channel and i see the buy orders go in everybody loves the price where it's at and people are excited to keep buying more i at least i am it's gamestop shares and vintage pokemon cards for me more so gamestop shares though yep, i got to get paid watching ufc 300 morans pump uh pumping me up for an arm wrestling match bro no rico's doing a live stream on that i'm pretty sure he's a he's a ufc commentator guy um but me no i won't be doing that uh, i don't care for hand-to-hand -hand combat or any of that I hope everyone's having a relaxed weekend, relaxing weekend. Thank you. Think of the time for a bit of whiskey. Think it's time for a bit of whiskey. Yeah, I drank last night. I won't drink tonight because I work in a couple of hours. I got to go to work. Um, according to Tonko Native, which I have not seen his, his episode where he's talking about me. Somebody told me that he made a new one. So we're going to go watch that together right now. You know, I love watching Tonko Native videos with you guys. If you guys don't know who Tonko Native is, he's a failed YouTuber who happens to talk about me every day, um, which is cool. Uh, his name's Tonko Native, not to get confused with Donko Native. But Tonko Native comes out with this, and it's 14 hours ago, 70 views. The other video he put out that we reviewed the other day has 70 views three days ago. So, yes, he is an up and coming YouTuber, Tonko so. Native. So, um, his video is 22 minutes, guys. I could never, um, we can't do it to you. There's no way. If I put this on 1.5, just so he can talk regular speed, um, let's read the comments here. Star Wars saga never ends. While the dark force is still around, is it time to get rid of them all? Number one enemy, rants. These guys hate me, by the way. Uh, Tony DeNero is the same way with AMC. Don't stop with AMC. AMC is finished. I'm blocking because I remember in his audience that Morantz has been wrong during the last three years. He's down 50%. He should show his GME portfolio and show how smart he is. Ugh! I should show you. He never admits he's wrong. Are you? I literally have a video say, hey, guys, just want to tell you that I was wrong. <laughs> literally say it that way. Um, let's see. You know, here's Hostile Takeover. Hostile Takeover says, truth is, he's not wrong about the balance sheet. He's not wrong about insiders buying shares. He's not wrong about the cash on hand for GameStop. Or the fact that GameStop has pivoted and become more lean and nimble. I agree GameStop has work to do, but no, but uh, know the way that is any different than any other company that wants to remain profitable. Furthermore, I'm an investor in GameStop because I like the company. I like the management team and the current fundamentals. If anything changes, I'll recess my position. But assessing my position based off the stock price is not investing. It's gambling. I see the potential for growth long term, and I'm patiently waiting for that. My, de my decision to do so has nothing to do with Morantz. It had to do with the more available facts surrounding GameStop. Tonko, you always preach about getting your money, and that's exactly the idea, just, uh, just doing it differently. Well, there you go. That's fair, Chad. Hit him with the truth. And he says, I agree 100%. In the end, it's about getting our, your, your money. I appreciate your observation. It makes sense. I buy GameStop and AMC and sell them accordingly. It's about getting your money. Thanks for stopping by. Always good to see the originals. What the hell is he talking about the originals? Um, Tonko Native, you just said you buy AMC and GameStop. I call bullshit. Because you don't own any. This guy, man. Tonko Native has a face only his mother can love. Look at that. This is public enemy number one, I guess. Or he's against me. He's attacking me. He doesn't like me. He makes videos hating me. Tonko, I love you, brother. Let's see what you got to say. I'm going to react in real time. I have not seen this video. Um, but before I get to it, I'm just going to have you on the screen, Tonko, okay? For a while. So you're going to have to, you're going to, have to find out where in the live stream I start talking about you. Or where I start actually playing your video. Because um, I'm going to go over the chat still. So I'm not going to get there. I know you lying. You didn't drive that much extra with your fugly. Ass. Okay. I don't know what the hell that means. Kyle, let's fight. Still better Mexican in Texas, Marantz. Uh, I don't know what the hell that means, but I got you. Gabriel, are you talking about Mexican food? There's not... Uh, I don't know what to tell you, man. My, my grandmother was from Texas. She's Texan. 
So our food was different growing up. It's different than the traditional Mexican stuff. Um, my grandma's a beast, bro. She was. My credit card came waiting for the pro membership to activate. There you go. Noisy Cor Corex, the cricket. I just call him, uh, you know, Dick Tracy. You send me a message if you want to throw down, Gabriel. <laughs> you guys are funny. Just showing up. Be glad to be here, GameStop crew. Yep. It's more creepy BS from Kyle. Yeah, eight sex location. Yeah. Y'all don't remember that stuff? Hey, ASL, girl, what's up? You know, well, I'm right here. Anyone else watching UFC 300? GameStop needs to be sponsor. Uh, why would we want to spend money on that? Having meltdown syndrome must be sad. Yeah, we don't want to spend money right now. GTN has 114 TV stations, which 19 insiders bought between, oh, we were talking about that, Michael Anthony, eight and nine dollars, which two insiders bought 10,000 shares each at 809 and pays a dividend at eight cents, which will close. Michael Anthony, we talked about that before. I could care less about the no name company, but we, we looked at it. Holy shit, good song. Well, thank you. I thought so too. Everyone's time is worth money. How much money are the meltdowners losing? Apparently a lot. Iran launches 200 drones. I saw it. I was more of a three and a D2 guard in, in basketball days, but you're right. The game is more focused on having unlimited range rather than having a variety of moves. Yeah, he's got to play defense, bro. Sorry, I can't make it in tonight. I'll have to run it back later. Keep sh uh, shooting the truth, Morantz, and never stop. Uh, thank you, Jay. I'll keep doing the best I can. Even Kobe admitted AI gave him a hard time. Uh, he said uh, Tracy McGrady gave him a hard time. T-Mac was a beast, too. Too bad for the injuries. Did him in later in his career. Watch him drop 60 on my team's head. Damn. CNBC will have a special market update on Sunday at 6 p.m. to try to calm uh, the markets. A little stop of the panic and selling like Friday. Well, not only Friday, how about Monday? What do you think is about to happen? You sell some 100K a share? Yeah, Kyle. Yeah, I would sell some. I'd sell 500. That's it. And then I'd stone cold you. I'd look you in the face. I'm like, what the hell does it matter what I would sell? Guys, we're at $11. And you're asking me when I would sell at 1000 <laughs> Can we get to 20 Can we get to 30 and 40 You guys, man. I'm OG like you, Marantz. I grew up watching basketball since the 80s. Yeah, the 80s. You know, I really don't remember watching basketball in the 80s because my real first game that I really remember, like recollection-wise, was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's retirement game where he gave him a rocking chair. I remember that. But, yeah, I knew my dad watched the Lakers growing up. But I really didn't start watching until, like, Eddie Jones and Shaq and the boys and Cedric Sabalas were balling and Nick Van Exel. And then – they got Kobe, and I was like, yo, play him, man. They got to put him in. And when they put him in, he airballed. And so I was like, man. But no, it's okay. I'll never respect LeBron James for stat padding and flopping for a quarter century. Sachs, I hear you, man. I'm just saying, man. At some point, you know, man's putting up 40,000 points. We got to stop the bullshit. I don't understand why GameStop sold off when the company made a profit. Mark Anthony, Michael Anthony, go check it out again, okay? You make a profit, you got to stop uh, the Wall Street ninjas coming in and attacking the stock like they do in silence, sneak attacks. But it's okay. I'm going to sell some for show at 1K. Yeah. Kobe came in the league with real goons. <laughs> These kids nowadays just knuckleheads. I guess, I don't know exactly what that means, other than the fact that Kobe was like 13th overall pick in 96. AI was number one. That was a good damn draft class, okay? But... I give you one. I give you a, a player that nobody gives credit to, and they should. A Kim Olajuwon. Kim Olajuwon should be one of the top ten players of all time. People have to know just how great he was. He wasn't considered a draft bust, and he was drafted before Michael Jordan. He gave them the work. He gave them the work in '93, '94, and you knew what it was. I didn't care if Jordan was in the league or not. That boy was doing work, and Akeem the Dream. He was a nightmare. So, I'm just letting you know. Let's just stay. Let's just say I push Kobe to be great. Sure. If it gets to 1K per share, I'm super chatting you 10K. Ray, Ray Pizzas, you're too much, man. There's a limit to what they, they allow you to do. But that's funny, though. Door to door encyclopedia salesman. Yeah, end game. Pre internet days. Bro, you walked in, you saw your friends with encyclopedias. You're like, bro, this dude bougie. Like, bro, what the hell is this? Yeah, that kid. That kid, the one that, that his parents let him drive a Mazda Miata. I straight up borrowed $500 from a grandma to buy a used Macintosh 500 just to get down on some Carmen San Diego on AOL. That is weird, bro. Um, Rance, have you bought any SoFi 
which is going to be better profits. Michael Anthony, you're asking about two different stocks now. Let's make it very clear. I only buy GameStop. I only care about Moas. I'm only here for, for forever. I'm only here for the stock to go violently up. That's all I care about, man. I'm Moas or nothing, bro. Stop asking about real investments. What's wrong with you, bro? It's GameStop, bro. We're going to go to the moon without anybody, no help at all. We're just going to crumble this whole world. Whole world is, see? If it hits 1,000, I'll buy you a beer for the rest of your life, Bobby. Oh, bro, I'm be drunk, bro. Bed Bath is going to pay out. What? <laughs> what are they? With what money? Dude, shareholders of Bed Bath & Beyond are class nine. They didn't even put them in there with the general and secured creditors. Like, they're not even with the guts, bro, at class six. They're way down there. You still have everyone at the top, the, the first, the secondary, first, you know, these uh, primary lend, uh, the, the primary bondholders. There's nothing you're going to do. There's no money for you. I don't know what to tell those kids, man. They hired the wrong lawyer. PBC is your telephone lawyer. <laughs> PBC goes like this. Every time he thinks he found something, he'll post it and be like, it's going to happen, boys. I need more eyes on this. That's how he treats. I need more eyes on this. <laughs> need more than your own? <laughs> you know, I used to call Linda Rill. And I'd go, Lind, um, I need you to walk me through this. Tell me what's going on. But you know what's the best part about Linda Rill? Uh, he's a lawyer, right? And he helped, he helped me out for a year at least. And, and I thank him for that. I don't, listen, I don't like the guy for, for leaving or whatever, not having the backbone that I have. Sure, whatever. I don't care. But he left. Good, whatever. I still respect him. I still give him enough respect for the, for the stuff he taught me. But do you know what's the best part about it? I, excuse my language, I fucking listened. <laughs> I listened. I took notes. He talked. I listened. Why is it when lawyers are talking, these kids aren't listening? <laughs> so, no, 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 no. Ryan's going to save us. Success was having a stereo system with the vinyl. Oh, double tape and CDs changer on the same tower. Um, Ryan Titties, that's not fair. That's not fair to say because in my household, we didn't have a stereo. We had DJ equipment. We had a full on two 15s and a horn, sub cabinets of 20 inch subs. Um, we had lighting. We had two turntables, two turning. Uh, technique turntables 1200s we had a denon dual disc cd player we had new mark mixers we had everything you can think of i remember when we first bought this thing that would allow you to burn your albums into cds you could take a record and play it and you could burn it to a cd i still remember that my dad was in there burning <laughs> making cds from scratch before you could download music and burn them onto your cds um it was crazy shit bro we had real systems so that was the that was the shit, and I told you the story. Me and Rico putting the speaker to the door at seven a.m. in the morning after my parents left to work. Seven a.m. We went from seven a.m. to eight because we had to go to school at like seven forty-five. So we were playing music loud, louder than anything you've ever heard in your life. But imagine DJ equipment full on blasting out the front door at seven a.m. They should have called the cops on us. We uh, it was and it was right there. It was like. Conscious Daughters was playing, right? Funky Expedition. Uh, something to ride to. If you don't know the song, I'm so sorry. It's called Funky Expedition. It was just boom, boom, boom. It was, it was the real shit, guys. And you guys don't like, watch this shit, bro. I swear to you, if you guys didn't grow up with this shit, then you didn't grow up ever. This is what me and Rico were playing at 7 in the morning, full on, loud as shit in 1990. I'm pretty convinced. We grew up in a neighborhood. That when we were playing football in the street, and anybody can tell you this, we are playing football in the street, they would just yell out, La Migra, because the Border Patrol was coming, bro. The immigration was coming. And all my friends would just scatter like roaches. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? I told you. That's a true story. I told you guys before. It was wild back then. I'm like, you guys really ain't. <laughs> Am I playing with non-U.S. citizens? What's going on? My buddy, my best friend of my life, still to this day, right? he finally got his. His paper is like at 18, 19. I still remember. I was like, bro, this whole time I thought you were legal. He's like, no, man, that's why I be hiding. <laughs> I was like, what? Shit is wild. Good kid, though. Good guy. All right, let me see what I got here for you uh, before we do this Panko Native video. Hey, guys, I got all night. I'm, I'm not going anywhere.
Texas, we walk in a gun store, buy buy a box of bullets, and walk out of the gun store. That is crazy, Alma. <laughs> Yo, are you serious, man? They go like this. Hi, um, you here to buy ammunition? I go, yeah, I want to get a box of you know nine mil. They're like, and they go like this. I go, oh yeah. Well, uh, do you have your birth certificate? Do you have your ID? And you have one bill of this month that shows your address that matches on your ID to show that you still live there. No? <laughs> All right, let me get out of here, bro. 21 feet, baby. Hit the like button. Thank you so much. Back, 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 back. Give me 51 feet. Back, back. Hey, I, I heard the new uh, Dad is a Good Man. Yeah. Can you unban me? I love watching your content. Who's mad? Who's mad? Uh, you're unbanned? You're unbanned. What can I tell you? I'm right here. Amen, Morantz. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not watching no UFC 300. No, guys. What the hell? Why would I watch this? Who's on it? The only guy I want to watch is a guy by the name of Bo, right? What's his name? Who's the guy from UFC 300 I want to watch? Um, he went to Penn State. He wrestled. He was a national champion. That's the only dude I care about. And they all claim he's overhyped. I'm like, no, he's not. He's a badass dude. His name is Bo something. Can't remember right now. But he should be, that's the guy. Up and coming star. So, all right, back to this. Uh, let's see. What's up, millionaires? I didn't expect a weekend stream. Hope we're having a good, great weekend. Yeah, me too, man. 5,000 GameStop shares. Wilbur Dodge. Good job, man. Considering you bought all those Bed Bath & Beyond shares and lost your ass. Congratulations on the 5,000 GameStop shares. Shit, you can open carry here. There you go. The lottery is rigged. Man. Uh, seriously, look it up. Yeah, I know. I've read about it before. I went to high school with one of those lotto winners. Dude won 1 million. Cool. SpongeBob is a permanent beta male for life. Yes. Let's see. He goes, I'd break you off if I won the lotto. But I don't play that, that state-sponsored Ponzi scheme. There you go. These last billion-dollar drawings were sus. They showed seven winners, three hours later, four. Seven hours later, only one. Sergio, not only that, they had delayed drawings. I saw that, too. Like, oh, we're going to do the drawing, but we're going to do it delayed because one state's reporting, blah, blah, blah. I'm in the National Guard. What's up, Jesse? And tell all your buddies in the National Guard. They're all a bunch of fat, out-of-shape punks and bitches. What, what, what does the active duty tell you guys? Same thing, right? You guys ever go and meet up with active duty? They just look at you guys like, hey, man, look at those dudes over there. <laughs> look at those guys. Can't even tuck in their shirt. Ranch is saving Private Ryan, basically. Thank you for your service. No, thanks for paying taxes, bro. Thank other people. Moran spitting facts. Love you, brother. Yeah. I seen it. They said I seen it. You're damn right you've seen it. Um, is this guy still talking, bro? I don't know why this guy talking. Moran's, uh got you on the 60-inch while I'm cleaning crazy. Different view. Well, that's good. Josh, shout out to Josh and the fam, bro. Josh, killing it like usual. My, my boy. What's up, everyone? Hope you're having a good weekend. Been out all day with the flag football and soccer with the kids. Great job, Carter. Do it. Do it right. GameStop and AMC couldn't be further apart as companies. Um, well, unless Adam Aaron dilutes more. Oh, there we go. Morant's the coward never serves on the battlefield. What is this? You know what, guys? Nah. Who doesn't even deserve an answer <laughs> you're a joke nah he's a pussy <laughs> serve these nuts there you go uh, <clears throat> oh man I, I tell you what man that's hilarious bro i got 300 more share pass a month oh wow that chump would be start would, would be staring in his shoes if one of us walked in the room uh yeah not selling there we go nah he would be taking them off SpongeBob Axrod, a coward because he's too scared to even hold a girl's hand. I don't know how that makes you a coward or not. I don't know if you want to hold a man's hand or a girl's hand. I wouldn't care what you do. But nervous just to walk out? Yeah. Some uh, some slow talk, two speed coming, five speed, 22 minutes with his intro. Yeah. <laughs> Strip. <laughs> oh, no, not paper losses. You know, the unrealized kind, <laughs> the worst ones. Thank you. The Melties, just that chump on the couch and belly. Oh, I don't know. I never watched the movie. I watched it like one time. I don't remember. But thank you so much. You're going to get yours, B. There you go. The only thing we're, we're wrong about is how dumb short sellers are. Thank you. Marantz. Ma Rants. <laughs> it's coming, bro. 
only thing more infinite than the risk of the short sellers. Yeah, there you go. Axelrod, you're awful. Such disrespect. Oh, bro. Don't worry about it, bro. Don't worry about it. This guy's got me all figured out 40 years later. Yeah, T Mac on Route Rushmore for me, um, one of. Uh, I'm not the most naturally gifted baller I've ever seen. If not the most naturally gifted baller I've ever seen. Yeah. I mean, Sean Kemp was amazing. If guys saw Sean Kemp in the 90s, and I'm talking about like 91 when he played against Jordan in the playoffs, yeah, you guys couldn't handle 92 maybe. Yeah, one of those years, 91, 92, you guys couldn't handle him. He gave them the business. And Pippen couldn't do shit. Jordan couldn't do shit. That was Sean Kemp. But that team, Detlef Shrimp, Sean Kemp, uh, Gary Payton, those are different types of ballers, bros. Different type of ballers. You got to put some respect on it. One, one team wins. But I'm telling you right now, there's some good ballers up there. It says right here, going to be able to get GameStop and whatever else you want for the cheap very soon. Nick the Quick. Oh, Nick the Quick was something else, bro. Taco looks like a malnourished, shaggy poor man's Vin Diesel. Yeah. Give him a little too much more credit. Too much credit, bro. They talk the same. Whether you win by an inch or a mile, win's a win. That was me talking to my team. Hey, guys, listen. We won by one point or none. It wins a win, all right? <laughs> there we go. Profit's profit. The dream had obviously the illest drop step ever. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. The bad news, we are early. The good news, we are early. SBS tell me. I love it. Is it bad I think Tonko is the DEI of YouTube? I don't know, man. Barkley, Oakley, Rodman, McDaniel, Malone, etc. All goons. Yeah. Yeah, those boys were bald. I mean, those boys were mean sons of bitches. And so was the Davis guy. Is it is it Dell Davis or the uh, I forget who one of the Davis boys, bro? The blank had uh, an ill squad. The Nuggets did when I was a kid, but never did anything. Who did they have? They had you're you're naming them, but I don't know these guys. Hold on, they had Van Exel, McDice, Lafonso Ellis, um, Abdul Sharif Mahim, whatever his name was. I remember him on the team. They had this other dude who doesn't play anymore. Um, yeah, Sharif Abdul Sharif Mahim and him. Uh, Jock Vaughn, did he play at the Nuggets? Didn't Jock Vaughn play over there? I don't know. Jock Vaughn's like a California State legend, bro. Like Baron Davis. Like, those boys were bad in high school. Can you go back to full screen? <laughs> Max keeps saying that his <laughs> Muay Thai teacher, Master <laughs> Joaquin, <laughs> this dude right here, two tables and a, mi and a mic. That's all you need. Master J. I was teaching my son something. I said, son, um, you need to hear this rapper. Right, I, I did this to my son the other day. I said, "This is the greatest song." When I was coming up, right, when my when my brother and I were playing music, this was a song that we played, and it was a different beat. It was a different flow. It was everything you wanted. It was a summer jam hit, and I played it in the truck. And my son said, "This." He goes, "Dad, it's nice." He said, "But um, can you tell me why it's so long?" <laughs> That's what he said. I go, "Son, songs were long back then." No, no, sir. Yeah, that's right. You know what I'm saying? It came oh, out. You guys know what it is. I like to, I like to, I like to, I like to, I like to introduce myself. It's me, yeah. 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 Hey, yo, spark up the Phillies and pass the stealth. Money grip, pull your asses out in a street brawl. I strike men quicker than lightning. You seen what happened in my last fight, friend? I then L's a clever threat. A lyricist who never sweat. Comparing yourself to me is like a binge to a Chevrolet. And clown rappers, I'm bound to slay. I'm saying hi to all the cuties from, from around the way. Yeah, cause I got all of them strong jack. My girls are like boomerangs. No matter how far I throw them, they come back. I'm coming straight out to NYC. I'm down with digging in the crates and I'm MVP. He said the most valuable poet on the MIC when we were growing up. That was our shit right there. Me and Reek. We're like, shout out to Kid Capri. We're like the number one DJ at the time. Tell my dad, yo, look at Kid Capri. Big L, bro. The lyrical goat. I'm trying to tell people. They don't know though. When my son, when my son saw it, my son was like, that's nice, Pop. That's nice. Then my son goes, Dad, give me the ox. Man, we don't have ox, just a Bluetooth, right? He wants to clock in. So he. He takes my phone and he plays two songs, guys. 
Shout out to my little man. I'm so happy he has his own personality and identity. When he played these songs, mind you, I'll never play them. I had never heard them before. And he played them, and he proceeded to dance in his chair. Do some shit I ain't ever seen. I said, son, don't ever do that. Now I know why you don't have a girlfriend, bro. You know, if this dude were just to just listen to Drake, just walk in and be like, yo, let me hit some Drake on him. Because Drake, I'm trying to tell my son how to do it. He's listening to this bullshit. Can you imagine him trying to talk to a girl? Hey, baby, let me, let me play this song for you right now. Let me play this shit. And he comes up. Guys, I, I don't even know the names of his shit. <laughs> I can't even ap- attempt to know the names of his shit. It was, um, oh shit, I'm going to see if it's right here. Oh, man. Oh, it is. Look at this. Oh, my God. I can't. I'm going to play my son's song right now. Guys, I apologize. My son was dancing in the chair. Dancing in the chair to this shit. Oh, my God. I'm embarrassed for him right now. So anyway, I um I sat in the truck with my son there. I right, talk. I don't want you on the screen while I'm talking to my son. So I sat. I sat in the truck with my son in the truck. He played that song, okay? And the song was so terrible. And I go, son, I want to talk to you. And he said, "What's up?" I said, "When did I let you down? Like, when did I get this wrong? Like, I grew up listening to music. Every party we play music. You're dancing. You have a good time. Everyone's always bobbing their head to the songs we play." I go, now you get your turn to put a song on, to be like, yo, Pops, get lit, check this out. And that's what you play? He looked at me, he goes, oh, that's fine. He, and I said, I said, son, I said, what, what do you say when you hear a good song? He goes, oh, that's hot, that's heat, that's heat, that's fire, that's heat. I said, that's heat, that's fire? I said, son, that's the worst shit I ever heard in my life. In my life. And the song's only two minutes, guys. It's a minute 48. I couldn't get through the whole minute 48. This is why he's saying, Dad, why are these songs so long? Because they have beats and lyrics and ideas and a message. This shit. Oh, my God. Um, we, were, we were actually parked outside the house when we did this one. It was, it was so bad, guys. <laughs> that is the worst song I've ever heard in my entire life. That was what I'm trying to tell you. Oh, Guys, I can't even make this up, bro. <laughs> yes yes sharon it's that bad it's that bad i don't even know the guy the guy's name is o- osa mason turks active osa mason 10 years later this is still a classic that's what somebody wrote on here me and my twins so geeked up this this fella in a Skyrim dungeon geeked up. Beat is revolutionary. Future remix. Draco season with the book bag. This song changed my life for the better. Five years later, still a banger. Hard. Tough as L. This goes hard. Fire. Yo, this was absolutely amazing. Keep posting. The, the, the comments are literally two to three words. <laughs> I know why. Because this is all, I mean, your attention span has to be just that. They just deleted this on Spotify. Need this beat. What beat? Oh, my God. Bro, my son really took the ox to play that shit. It, it ruined my whole night. I said, son, don't ever do it. That was Tonko's theme song. Those are troll comments. No, they're not. They're real. My son said it. Kids these days have zero attention span. Yeah, that was not good. <laughs> bro. Yeah, it, it was bad, bro. Yeah, he said a whole minute 32 at eight after that. Yeah. All right, guys. Here comes the best part of my day. We're going to watch uh, the number one YouTuber in America. 
Mr. Or I'm sorry, the number one YouTuber in the Philippines uh, by the name of Tonko. Not to get confused with Taco. Um, Tonko Native, my biggest fan. We're going to watch him on 1.5. Oh, well, I was playing that at 1.5, huh? Is that probably? No, it was normal. Cool. At least you guys got to really hear it. <laughs> All right. In the chat right now, it's Iron Shovel. Iron Shovel came into the Discord. As you guys know, it's pinned to the top of the chat. You guys can join the show at any time. Iron Shovel, the floor is yours. What's going on, Iron? Got to unmute yourself, and then you're on the show. No? Well, whenever you want to talk, the floor is yours, okay? All right. Let's go. Tonko Native with 70 views, Tonko. We're about to show the world what you got here. I got more people in the chat right now than you do watching this damn video. Let's see what you got. So, check this out, people. I just finished watching a video by Marantz Rants where he called on the meltdowners, all right? At least that's what he calls the video, to the meltdowners. Now, Marantz, you have to understand something. These people you call the meltdowners, the reason people come after you is because you sow or you reap what you sow. Okay. I don't know what about reaping or reeking or whatever. I just want people to remember that this is at 1.5. <laughs> this is at 1.5. Yeah, I know it sounds like he's talking normal. But if you didn't know it, you wouldn't know it. Because <laughs> at one speed, oh, I want to see this at one speed. Oh. So. <laughs> so, check this out, people. I just finished watching a video by Morant France <laughs> where he called on the meltdowners, all right? At least that's what he calls the video, to the meltdowners. Now, no. Morant, you have to understand something. These people you call the meltdowners, yep. the reason people come after you is because you sow or you reap what you sow. Here's my problem, Tonko, and I don't mean this to, like, bash you, bro. I'm, I'm being sincere when I say this. You know that the show is called Morant's Rants, right? And I have this ability to rant about any topic, any time, or somebody who calls the show or talks to me, asks me a question. I just rant. I go, boom, at times. I've done it plenty of times over the last three years. Thousands of videos, right? And so, welcome back to Morant's Rants. Plenty of good information, a little bit of motivation, a whole lot of truth, no financial advice. Just say the shit, right? It just comes out. It's not like I had to practice, do too much, but it's part of it. I want to know. Why? Just to speak the way you speak, as slow as you do, what are you thinking about the whole time? Like, is there enough dead space and air space in that time? Like, look at this shit. And from the beginning, since you came on the YouTube scene, all you've done is ridicule people, make fun of people, and act like you're better than everybody, right? No. Not better than everybody, just you. This is a me and you thing here. This is an A and B conversation, and they can see their way out of it. This is a January, February conversation, and they can march their way out of it. It's just me and you. Now, if I could rewrite the alphabet, I would take out the I and the U and put them together. <clears throat> or you and I. So now. The people who once followed you, whether they believed in Jimmy or not, it's irrelevant because they followed you like I followed you because we believed that you were smart. We believed that you, you were intelligent. You don't think I'm smart? You don't think I'm intelligent? Okay, cool. Then I'm dumb. <laughs> Can I just be dumb? You know what's the best part about being dumb? You don't need more than a fourth grade math level to actually understand how to do pluses and minuses. And that would be the balance sheet, right? You don't need to get too lucky in this world to understand that a great balance sheet would indicate more assets and liability, shareholder equity, no debt, and a profit on the company. There you go. What do they say? You should invest in a company a monkey can run. Because eventually one will. Well, in this case, a bunch of dumb people are running GameStop, apparently. And a bunch of dumb people are making videos about GameStop. Just me. Wait, are there more YouTubers that you're ready to talk about? No, just me? Oh, I'm watching you, though. This is my first time watching this video. Hold on. Very slow. Because of the um, information. You Hold on, do that again. You, uh, no edits, no cuts, apparently, right? No edits, no cuts. This is a one-take session, right? Like I do them. OTS, one-take. Can you say all this very fast? Does it work out for you? Mm, okay. 
And I've heard you talk about Dana Mike. You better watch yourself, bro. It's my little brother. He's a good guy. All right, let's check this out. Um, this is Tonko Native still talking about me and getting it out. He's thinking about it as he says it. And I'm going to ask you, Tonko, please do not wink at me in this video. Another thing I don't want you to do, I want you to put those traps away. You got shoulders that look like they're droopy, bro. They look sad. They look like teardrops, bro. I don't want to show you what the traps look like. I look like I'm a, like I'm a cage fighter. But it's okay. I know you don't believe it, though, huh? You don't think so? Okay, watch this shit. Like, you, what do you do all day, bro? I've seen you chop wood, and I'm talking about your feet. I saw your karate video from, like, 20 years ago, the one you tried to send to intimidate me. It worked. I'm nervous. We believe that you were smart. We believe that you were intelligent because of the um, information you put out. And no one can dispute, regardless of what a dick you are, regardless of whether people like you or not or respect you or not, I have to admit that you're one of the smartest people on YouTube. Holy shit. That put hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, I got to clip this part. Yo, did this guy just say, it's because you're ignorant, you're dumb, you're stupid. And in the same sentence, your mind told you to say, that I'm one of the smartest guys on, I am intelligent and I'm smart on YouTube. I don't understand what I'm listening to right now. Hold on, I know Almo's triggered. Almo goes, yo, I'm triggered, it's going so slow. <laughs> and Lindy Ral and Almo and Staxolot and Ruben and Kyoto, all the fake <laughs> um, profiles you made, Marantz, to be your monty. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Watch this shit, hold on. I gotta hear this complete, because I don't know what I just heard. People, and act like you're better than everybody, right? So now, the people who once followed you, whether they believed in Jimmy or not, it's irrelevant because they followed you like I followed you because we believed that you were smart. We believed that you were intelligent because of the um, information you put out. And no one can dispute, regardless of what a dick you are, regardless of whether people like you or not or respect you or not, I have to admit, that you're one of the smartest people on YouTube that puts out the information that people need to hear. Hey, yo, I need to put this shit in the time capsule right now. This is awesome. Tonko, I thought this was a hate video. This is awesome. Oh, my God, man. I'm so, I'm so excited, and I just can't hide it. My, my nips showing. Are they showing? I mean, dude, bro, you're really, hey, the bro love is real right now. A minute 30 in. It feels like five hours, but a minute 30 in in the video, I'm telling you, I'm so excited. Oh my God. He said that I am the greatest. Uh, dude, I needed your cosign. I, this is it. This is like P Diddy co-signing with Mace and anyone else out there. This, this is our collab. This is our time right here. You being more of the P Diddy kind of guy and me being more of the Mace. But here we go. The problem is that when it comes to GME, it seems like you're being paid. It seems like... You've been put there by, I don't know, the GME people, the uh, GameStop executives. Someone paid you or is paying you to pump GME regardless of the outcome. It doesn't matter what. That's what it looks like because. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Somebody's paying me. You know, do, do you say this about, like, Dallas Cowboy fans? You know, Dallas Cowboys have won the Super Bowl in, like, 28 years. And it's like, hey, yo, somebody must be paying these fans out here to be making these videos saying that they're going to go undefeated and they're the best thing ever to walk the place of the earth and Tony Romo's the greatest. No, some people are just fans, right? But when it comes to, like, investing, you think someone's paying me from GameStop? Like, what do you think they're paying me for? You know what? I need people to look more into this balance sheet and understand how to really invest and look more into private equity and how to, like, do you understand how to separate the two? Because you can't do it right now. This is the problem that I have with Meltdowners and, of course, Tonko. They don't know how to separate the, the information from their own feelings. I have given out the most factual information about multiple investments over the course of the last three years on the Internet. There is not another channel, and I challenge anyone, that has done the due diligence via private equity versus private equity. Not another channel giving out the information that we give here. There's a reason why there's informed investors. But what you can't understand is how it's correlated to GameStop. Because real time is the investment. Real time is the pivot. Real time is the insiders buying in and the profits being shown. 
but you're sitting in a time capsule that you're going to lose, Tonko. That's the problem. And the only reason why I bring you on to give you this idea and this, look at this, 70 views on your video. Do you think that I have to care about another YouTuber at all? I don't have to care about the meltdown. I don't have to care about you or anyone else. Doing it. No, this platform's bigger than all of that. When I was a YouTuber like you with like no viewers and no following or anything, I was going up to be, you know what they would do? Hell no, we don't want to, we don't want to interview Morant. We don't want to debate that guy. You know why? Because I had the truth. Because I had the information. You, I just bring you up just to give somebody a different view and like. I can ignore all this shit. Just make videos. Hey guys, listen up. Uh, GameStop's balance sheet looks amazing. Fundamentals are profit. I'll see you in three months. But where's the fun in that? Where's it? Did I did I pay you to make this video? Did someone pay you, Tonko, to talk bad about me? I want to know why you make it your daily activity to watch every video I put out, and then you go make content about it. Somebody must be paying you, and not much, by the way. But what about the meltdowners? Who's paying them to destroy this information that we put out and the YouTubers that put it out? Because they're not destroying Ryan Cohen. I don't see posts about them, Ryan this, Ryan that, Larry this, Larry, as they buy it. No one's attacking the actual insiders of GameStop or the store directors or any officers. No, all they do is attack content creators that give out the correct information. Hi, victim of your own success, right? I don't know, Tonko. Let's see what we got, bro. I just think you have a man crush. That's what I think you do. I think you have a man crush. I think you're very attracted to me, which I don't have a problem with it. I'm actually flattered. I really am. <sighs> Although you look kind of mean right here. Let me make sure my microphone is on. <laughs> because from the time you came onto the scene, all you've done is talk good about Ryan Cohen and GME. It doesn't matter how bad the stock does. It doesn't matter what Ryan Cohen does. The problem with you is that you're like these Democrats. You're like the Biden administration who keeps saying that the economy is good when they know damn well the economy is fucked up. I can hear, I, I can hear roosters in the background and gunshots, whatever that was right now. But you're telling me I'm like the Biden administration? <laughs> Am I the weekend at Bernie's? <laughs> Hey, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm truly convinced that Biden has fallen like 200 times since being the president because we've only seen him fall five times. But I'm telling you, if we've seen him fall five times, probably fell like 200, right? Like Secret Service just picking his ass up all day. I'm not Biden, bro. You got to calm down, okay? I'm standing up tall on my two feet right now. I'm telling you, I'm, my, it's my first day out. There's a, I, I taught these suckers how to ball. Keep that pot <laughs> hot. Uh, not only is it fucked up, but they fucked it up. And they're in such denial that they pretend that the, uh, the border issue that they caused has never, um, they've never had an issue. They blame the prior administration for all of their fuck ups. And this is what you remind me of. This is who you remind me of, the Biden administration. I want to know why it matters to you if you're in the Philippines. Are you voting? Are you still voting via mail? I need to know. I know you're from Florida. I need to know. Are you still voting, bro? Is it, is it illegal? I don't even know if that's legal. Maybe if you're in the military, you can still do an absentee ballot, but you're not in the military. I can tell. But um, I remind you of the Biden administration. Hmm. Okay. Uh, this is new for me. All right. We're going this route. You go on YouTube, yep. you pump GME, yep, I do, I do, I do. no matter what anybody says, yep. whether they respect you or not, whether they follow you or not, you have no courtesy, you have no humility, you're pompous, you're full of shit, you're full of yourself, and you act like you're, you are the authority when it comes to GME, when it comes to Ryan Cohen. Right? You know what's crazy? Taco, I, I built my own space. Like, I'm just telling you, like, man to man, okay? And this is, like, the hardest part for people to understand. I wake up every day, and I build my own space on the Internet. Like, literally post my own channel, my own videos. I put in all my time and effort, all my work. And how do I get paid back for that? Like, ask yourself. My wife just asked me this today. We had this conversation at lunch. She's like, you'll never get back that time in life that you've put into this channel and the information you put in. She's like, I know you do a lot. She's like, but 
but that's going to take away from things that we could have done differently, right? Like, do you second guess any of it? That's what she asked me. I said, no, baby, I said, I think we're doing great. But it's something that I wanted to do. But it, it definitely makes me the authority in the space because it's my space. Uh, not the website, my space, but it's my, my channel. Like, you don't have to watch the channel. You can invest in GameStop or whatever you're buying without ever knowing who the hell I am. But if you click and you watch and you support, now you know what it is. But that gives me the authority to talk on it because I built my own space. You can build your own too. Apparently, you're doing great. I don't know how many years it's taking you to get where you're at, but you're doing great. I'm a fan. I'm watching. Right? And when people come to you who follow you, who respect you, and ask you legitimate questions about GME, rather than you being a man, being humble and respectful towards those who follow you, you act like you're the man. You act like you're better than everybody. And so you encourage those who watch you or your followers and you encourage your moderators who are also full of shit to go after everybody and anybody that simply has a question about GME. First off, okay, it's, I, I hate it. You always go after the mod. It's crazy, bro. They're like innocent bystanders. Um, just to make this very clear, because you've said it in the past and it was so wrong. The moderators of this channel, um, and you can ask any of them, it's not that they contribute to the channel as in to build the content. Like, they are surprised just as much as the next guy whenever I say, hey, I'm going to post a video. They don't know what the content is. They don't know. When the way they help is they filter information like via the Discord when people are attacking or saying misinformation about me. So that's how I get noticed, right? So like a non-moderator, but yet a mod to the channel would be Jay, Jason. So Jay, who is a huge contributor to the show, my number one contributor, and he's not considered a mod because he doesn't have the he doesn't have the wrench. But think about it. He'll send me videos and be like, hey, this guy's talking shit about you. Here's this. That's how they contribute. That's how they help. Because when misinformation, your misinformation gets put out, I put light on it. That's all it is, man. It's nothing personal. You think I, could, I walk around like I'm bigger and better than everybody. It's not that. It's I just hold people accountable for what they say. So if you say some shit that's out of bounds, I'm going to hit you up on it. People talk about me all the time. Tony Dinero talks about me indirectly, never says my name. I don't post his videos every day. I'm like, ah, whatever. Tony's an idiot. We know that part. He says buy AMC, okay? <laughs> just like you claim you buy it. But I don't, I don't think any less of you, Tonko. I think the world of you, man. I do. You're starting your own space out here. It's tough. It's tough. I want to know where your, where your uh, YouTube shop's coming. I want to be able to order a T-shirt that says Tonko Native. But once again, you're trying to paint me out to be something I'm not, so it sucks. Sucks a little bit. Yeah, I know my mic's down a little low, so sorry about that, guys. It's just I'm trying not to get the echo from playing it to you and TikTok at the same time. That you may or may not agree with. And the problem with you, Marantz, is that you claim, you claim that Ryan Cohen is the reason why Chewy is successful, right? Yes. You keep comparing GME to Chewy. My question to you is, did Chewy ever go to the moon? Yeah. Did Chewy ever go to the moon? Did Ryan Cohen ever cause Chewy the stock that you claim it's because of him that this company is doing well and became a billion dollar company, which by the way, from what I understand, they became a billion dollar company after Brian Cohen sold it. Not before, not during, but after. But what do I know? You're the expert. You tell me. Okay, let's pause you right there. I am the expert and I will tell you, just so you're clear. Um, so Ryan Cohen, Alan Adel, Michael Day. The three employees that actually started Chewy, built it from scratch, took seed money from Volution Capital, which would be Larry Chang. Uh, they took uh, 15 million total, I believe. And they, oh, I'm hearing some, hearing some emotion. Okay, good. So they went ahead and sold it for 3.2 billion, right? To PetSmart. But here's the thing. When they sold the company, it's not that it wasn't profitable or whatever it was. They sold the infrastructure of the company. They built it. So now that it has seven distribution centers and it has all of this, you know, this marketing behind it, and it's a, it's a machine. Yes, that's a company. That's, that's what happens. You leverage it and you buy it to, and you sell it to someone who's willing to buy it bigger and better than you. If GameStop somehow, some way, became a bigger company and or he leveraged it and he made it into something, someone would be buying it for 50 to $100 billion. What does that do to the share price? Well, I'll let you go and guess. But at $100 a share, what's our, what's our market cap? 
30 billion. So they better be willing to pay $300 a share, $200 a share. Is that a good price point for you? Is that 10x from your money today or tomorrow? Yeah. But you don't understand how they actually built the business and then got value for it? That's just your ignorance. Because you guys, and I say you guys, okay, the uninformed, you collectively, you guys give value to a company based off of a share price. You keep telling me that a company has value based off of what the share price is. That has nothing to do with it. A share price is just an agreement between two people. That's all that is. They agree to sell it for whatever. But I don't agree to sell at these prices because this company is worth more than $11 a share. Right? So you stop evaluating the company for the share price and start evaluating the company for the fundamentals. And then you'd understand they're operating at a 2x on assets versus liabilities, that they do have $1.2 billion of bank, that they don't dilute their shareholders. That's not how they generate cash and wealth. Over the last three years, their cash burn has been just operationally, yet they still made more shareholder equity from 2019 to now. They're flat. They're even. So they didn't lose anything. They just had a rough patch right there for five years. But the leadership has changed. The mindset has changed. The culture has changed. So what could be infinite? Everything. But you're going based off of one quarter's info, the last quarter, right, where they had top line revenue drop off. And everyone, well, they lost this much money based off of one quarter. You're not looking at the bigger picture. If we could all just base a company off of their previous quarters, then what the hell are we investing for? But the short, you know, the all-time short position for GameStop, right now it's the highest it's ever been in the last three years. Today is the highest short percentage it's ever had. You know why the short is doubling down, tripling down? Because they have to. When a short is going to lose, they don't just buy in and go long. They double down, they triple down. We saw the interview from King Griffin. He said during the housing crisis, his company was going to cripple and buckle and that they were on the, they were on the brink of everything and that they doubled down on the, on the short of, the, of what it was. And they finally caught some wind and they went the other direction. But yeah, they were, they were that close. Well, guess what? Right now, someone is that close. I don't care if it's Credit Suisse and HSBC. I don't care if it's Archegos. I don't care if it's Bitcoin itself. Something is this close from breaking. So wars are going to start happening. So bad headlines are going to start happening. Or they're going to triple down on what GameStop is. But I'll tell you what hasn't changed. The pivot and the transition in the upward direction. That has not changed. It's still headed up. I'm telling you, if we had a quarter come out here and we shit the bed, and I go, man, how's that possible? How are we going to lose $51 million this quarter in profit? How is an operational loss going to come in at $51 million? Because I'll tell you what, interest alone is 15 So we'd have to lose $60 million operationally. And I don't see how that's possible. I've looked at it every which way. We had one-time expenses. This is why adjusted EBITDA comes into play for GameStop for this year. Because the one-timers are gone. We're going to have more profit to the bottom line that SGNA, what is that going to be? You think it's going to be $340 million? It was just $360, $359 in quarter four. That's Christmas with all of the extra you know, seasonal employees. You know what it costs to actually put out that product and that information. So SGNA for quarter four at $360, what do you think quarter four is going to be? Or quarter one is going to be? I'm going to guess $290, $280. Well, let's go that route. So if it's going to be $280, $290, we just saved on SGNA alone. From 347 to that, about $50 million, $6 million. We lost $51 million. So now we're even. But margin, margin is the key here because GameStop fundamentals put you at 23.5% on margin. We're talking about net profit. Here we go. So from cost of goods sold to what's left to you, 23.5% on GameStop. That was last year, quarter one. Do you know what they averaged for the whole year? 25%. Do you know where they've been headed in the trailing 24, 24 and a half? So they're going to be higher. It's going to happen. They're going to get around 26%, 27% on margin. So what do you think is going to happen to profit? This is easy. This is elementary. But you paint it out to be something it's not. All of you do this. And all I have to do is keep defending it because I know how to do math, just like you. Yeah, top line revenue came down. Nobody guessed it. Nobody could guess how many stores they were shutting down, whatever it may be. But Europe tells me everything I need to know. Europe closed 160 stores. And guess what? 100 million dollars more to the top line on revenue why because something's happening e-commerce is taking over those store closures and we'll figure out how america works but it closed 455 million stores and only lose 650 million dollars on top line revenue but yet create a profit this should be celebrated and applauded and you should be buying more shares 
That's just what I should be telling institutional-wise, right? Smart money. But you guys want to see two quarters of profit. You want to see three quarters of profit. You might see something, Tonko. But we'll see it together. Oh, by the way, I did all of that just thinking off the top of my head and ranting. And it didn't take me 22 minutes of silence. But. You're right. But I, but is I got a message in between all this where I got to go throw the trash. Look at how real I am. My wife just texted me and said, babe, can you throw the trash so I can make dinner? And I said, hell yeah, I'll throw the trash so you can make dinner, mom. Why wouldn't I? Is real? Uh, Iran attacks Israel. We ready to do this? We ready for this war? Or are we just going to enjoy ourselves as we go to the moon? You tell me what we're going to do. Going to the moon. Going to the moon. So soon, don't be mistaken. The yanks won't be shaking or breaking because we're going to the moon. Day very soon, gonna wake up on the moon. Brand new yacht and the McDonald's in my living room. Bright yellow Lamborghini, 50 meter swimming pool. Champagne every day, eight fam. What you do? Wanna hang? Wanna chill? Oh, you got a mansion too? Oh, that's right, held on tight. Jack titties every night. We was in way back when they tried to chop it down to 10. And she's couldn't comprehend. Ace was strong until the end. Let's pretend it, sit to tell they be sweating Had enough of these felons, but the yanks we rebelling Cause we never be selling, till we send it to heaven Now we be out here yelling, hey screw you Kenny Bought my wife a minivan to share with the boyfriend But I pull up in the bands, plates saying all of crayons Going on an airplane, don't think we'll be back again Celebrating every day like it's your birthday Probably more manipulation If you did your creation Of a crooked operation Bought more while it was low Got more dips than Trader Joe's Oh, you thought that we'd let go What the hell you take us for? Holla if you spend your last dollar On bananas while living in squalor We don't claim to be scholars We the spook brain dummies And we never stood taller Yeah, we do this for love And we do this for honor Apollo 11 ain't got nothing on us We the planet of the apes And in MOAS we trust M-O-A-S-S Oh, hell yes Gonna send it into space Go fire up the jets Tell my DD Call me out John Rocket Man This is the way Gonna be gorillionaires Ground control to major time We about to have liftoff Call us Neil Strong. Gonna keep holding on Gonna keep holding on Stop right there Let's go Alright let's get back to the show Trash is out guys Whether I know anything about Chewy or not I do know this That if Ryan Cohen Was the cause for that company to become the company it is today which he had nothing to do with by the way why if he did then it go to the moon if the balance sheets show that this company is successful why didn't chewy go to the moon under ryan cohen and what makes you believe that if chewy didn't go to the moon under ryan cohen what makes you believe that gme is going to the moon under Ryan Cohen, just because the books may say that GME is going to recover or do well, which by the way, that billion dollar extra spending cash you keep talking about had nothing to do with their earnings. It had to do with a bunch of people who got behind GME, put their stimulus checks into it, put their money into it, and caused GME to spike. That's the only reason GME has money to spend today. Nothing that they've done since has made them a profitable or a company worth believing in. Now, another thing, Morant, you put out this message to the meltdowners saying how they're coming at you on Reddit, how they're leaving these stupid comments and dissing you, right? First, I just want to tell you something, Tonko, um, about Chewy.com. He traded it before, or he sold it before it went public, so I don't know about the stock price and why it didn't go to the moon. 
Um, I don't really care about how things are evaluated. I know that Chewy was at $20 a share in March of 2020. And all the way up until the day the buy button got taken away from GameStop, I went up to $120 a share. So 5X, 6X on your money. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty damn good for the people who got in it during that time frame. But um, that was a seven month run, right? Nine month run, whatever it was. It's down to $14 today, $18. I don't even know. It's below 20 So yeah, I don't know how the business is running today. I don't care. <laughs> What is it worth? It's worth three million dollars to um to Ryan, and he probably sold it too soon because the value actually went up uh, well past that. Um, the market cap is currently seven and a half billion, seven point seven. So um, yeah, I think you're wrong. But hey, what do I know? I just work here. Let's go. Right about GME, and so you had that message that they're wrong, and you're right because you're always right. Not only are you right but you work harder than anybody else in the world. You're a better man than everybody else in the world because your morals are beyond that of hell. If anything, it sounds like you're the second coming of Christ mm. by the way you talk. Mm. Now, you need- I just want to clarify, you said all of that, not me. So Tonko, you said I'm the second coming of Christ. I'm God's gift. I'm this, I'm that. Uh, I didn't say any of this. So if that's the way you interpret me telling my story, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry you feel that way. Or maybe I'm not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Demi the bottle said it best. You need to understand something, Lorenz. Oh, let me, please. There once were a bunch of people who used to follow you. Not just because of GME, but because of the other information that you would put on because you're a pretty smart guy. I don't have to like you to know that. The problem with you is that you're a dick and you're an asshole and you're a piece of shit. You don't know how to talk to people. You don't know how to communicate your intelligence, your smarts. You act like you're better than everybody. So those people who once followed you because they believed in you, all they want to do is see you fall. All they want to do is see you fall flat on your face and they want to see you come and last on that piece of shit horse that you've been riding for the past three and a half years. So you do know that what goes around comes around, right? You do know that those who are coming after you, those who are trolling you, were people who once respected you. Did you know that? Did you realize? Do you even understand that? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do know about the snakes, brother. They, you're one included. People don't know about Tonko. This guy followed me with his phone, his wife's phone. <laughs> he made multiple accounts. I thought I had more followers. Then I saw I got I got unfollowed by like seven people. I go, oh, that's just Tonko native in his spare phones. I, I got you, bro. I'm not worried about it. You think I worry about Sue, Linda Real, um, who's the other Monster Buddy? Uh, who's this other guy you hang out with? What's the other guy's name? The one I don't even know these guys' names. That's how much I don't care. I've got names already. Is it come and go? She's just <laughs> 10 years from now, I'm GameStop, babe. And I, I'm right there. Be, I, 10 years from now, I guarantee you that. I put this on my mom, okay? Put in this is a, in our, my part of town. When you put some on your mama, that means that you're putting it down for real. So I put it on your children. I put this on my son, man. 10 years from now, it's going to be me and Almo and Stacks, right? And I know Hot and Ruben and Ravens. I know everybody. But I'm just saying, like, literally, I call Almo every day. I talk to Almo every day, guys. Okay, every day, and we talk about nothing. We're a bunch of females, bro. Hey, what's up? What you doing? Shh, none shit. Just hitting it. Just sitting right here at the job. <laughs> Literally nothing. Nothing. Ten years from now, same thing. I remember when we bought them GameStop shares for life. Look, this is how much we don't give a fuck about life. Okay, I just remember when we bought those GameStop shares for like fifty bucks a share back in the day. They were two hundred, whatever they were. Yeah, I remember, man. Yeah, bro, that's crazy, huh? Hey, you see what happened? The company went bankrupt, man. Watch this. Tonko, think about this. The company went bankrupt 10 years later. They got killed by private equity. They never made it. Ryan Cohen, he didn't, they didn't work out, man. Shit, bro. Yeah, I know. Man, you remember all that money we lost? Yeah, bro. We, I do. I remember, man. Yeah. All right, so what are we doing now? I don't know shit. I'm hungry. You want to get something to eat? Yeah. You get it now? Nothing you say is going to matter. The amount of money I win or lose doesn't matter. It's the journey, kid. It's the people I surround myself with. Now listen, I'm I'm very I'm very well aware of how I've mapped this out for myself. I have 
put it into motion that I will come out on top. None of the, the outcome that you think is going to happen is not that. The outcome you're betting on, me failing, I already told you, I got people praying on my downfall. That's okay. They're going to have to do it. But the difference is this. I have multiple things working for me. I have God working for me. And I know you don't think that. I'm working with him. You don't think that, right? I don't mean to get spiritual on you. I'm just telling you. There is a reason in life why people get put into people's lives. And it's, they call it serendipity. Fortunate mistakes and accidents. There's a reason why you watch the videos, Tonko. There's a reason even now that you think I'm a snake in the grass or you think I'm lying or I'm going to lose. You still watch. Because deep down inside, you love it. You get where I'm coming from, bro? I know how much you want to watch me fail. I also know how much you want to watch the show. So keep on watching. Don't worry. I'll keep making content so you can wake up every day. I'm your purpose. Don't forget it. All right. That the people who are disrespecting you now, mm. like me, were once followers of you. And even if I believed in GME, even if I hope GME went up and spiked and did well, it's irrelevant. Because in the end, I want to see you fall. Not just me, but everybody else who doesn't like you. Why don't people like you? Because you're a dick, because you have no humility, and because what goes around comes around. Is this how you talk to people? Like you're trying to coach me up and tell me how I should be communicating with individuals, but all you're doing is attacking me with vulgar language. Like it's not very professional of you. It's, I don't know. This is, this is just counterproductive what you're doing here, brother. Um, talking out both sides of your mouth. Marantz, you're the smartest man in the room. But you're also the dumbest. Marantz, you're kind and gentle, but you're really not. I mean, what am I? Yeah, I'm soft. I'm a beta male, right? To you, you're the alpha. Look at you. Braces. I don't know. You got to let it go. You got to let it go, bro. You got to let it go. At some point, you just got to let it go. Like, I know I got gaps in my teeth. I'm okay with it, man. I know I got a belly going. It's getting there. I know my hairline's receding. It's, it's there. I don't know. Bro, I really don't care. <laughs> That's the whole point. I don't care. <laughs> Shit. Why don't you figure this out? I don't care what you're saying right now. I just let you play. Bro, can we establish this is 23 minutes long? <gasps> and so I'm saying to you the same things that you said to me, right? The same things you said to all your other followers who used to follow you the way I used to follow you, right? But you started this. You started this. You went and took the people who came to you like I came to you and said, hey, Marantz, thanks for your comment. But because you didn't agree with the way I trade, because you didn't agree with the way I invested my money, you decided to disrespect me and then in turn have your moderators, these full of shit moderators whose face you've never seen, you had them come after me. Oh, man. It's called delusion. <laughs> Delusional. You know, I've never sat down and said, hey, Ruben, the next time that mother effer walks in here, bro, ban him, bro. Block him. Give him 500, bro. Give him 300 seconds. Never happened. That conversation never happened, Taco. You did it all to yourself. But you're doing great right now. <laughs> and the mod team, as you said, I've never seen their faces. Uh, Elmo, I think I've seen you. Ruben, yep. Um, Stacks, yeah. Uh, Ravenstown, how about that? You guys remember when Ravenstown? You guys don't remember this. I Ravenstown's the first guy I ever sent a T-shirt to. I sent him a T-shirt, and he went on vacation and wore it. It was a Morant's Ranch shirt, and um, he wore it. And he, I think he went to the zoo or something. And I've seen Kyoto too. I, mean, I don't know what to tell you, bro. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I really don't. And hot, yeah. I can call hot right now. He picks up. Taco, who do you call? The Ghostbusters? Right? You had your followers come after me. Mm. Because that's what you do. That's what you do. You go after everybody who doesn't agree with you or who do agree with you but ask you legitimate questions about GME but because you, you get offended that people don't want to hold GME. You want to tell them what to do with their money. You want to tell them how to trade. 
You want to tell people that if they don't hold GME, you can't be their friend. You're like the Democrats. No, I'm dead serious right now. I don't like hanging out with people who trade GameStop. I like hanging out with people who hold it. That's my prerogative. How's that? How are you painting yourself to be a victim here, bro? You're not going to be my friend. Bro, it's like, it's like saying I'm only going to play basketball with people who know how to shoot threes. If you're a shooter, I only want to play with you. But, you know, but I want to play too. We'll go play over there, bro. I don't like you. I don't like you because I don't like the shoes you wear. Like, no, I'm not like that. Honestly, you're a day trader. You swing trade. So, yeah, I talk shit about all swing traders and day traders. I do. I got a YouTuber right now by the name of Jackie De Tits who decided to call me out and put me in a group with all the other grifters. And he said, Marantz is a, is a grifter for GameStop. He diamond hands. That's not how you're supposed to make your money off this trade. You're supposed to swing trade GameStop. And that's what I'm trying to teach people. Now pay me $50 a month and join my Discord. You claim that I pay or I charge $79 a month for Discord. You said that out loud on your last video. Marantz is, is charging $79 for anyone who wants to join the Discord. It's completely free. It always will be. And it's right there, pinned to the top of the chat in this live stream. Uh, we've never charged a single dollar for Discord. I'm not even in charge of the Discord. That's Ruben, Almo, Kyoto, the guys over there that what, put the cups on you. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. $79. Bro, you're crazy. You think I would charge people for the information that's readily free? How about this? I don't have a single education video that gives out information that helps you with your investments. I don't have a single video behind a paid wall, meaning you don't have to be a member with the channel. You don't have no money at all. Anything that's factual and informational, I put it out for free. And I always have. And I always will. There is no, hey, pay me for the top 10 stocks this month. I don't do any of that shit. And I could. I could. I could go out there and tell the whole crew, guys, I've been studying. Here's my next 10 stocks this month. Let's do it. Whether they're right or wrong, who cares, right? I'm just going to charge 10 bucks a, a month for it. Think about it. I got a twin brother who has a platform where he gives out the sports winners of, of games and he charges $25 a month and he's got 3,000 people paying. He makes $75,000 a month. Think about it. You're going after me because, like, well, free info. My brother's making 75 grand a month. Is that crazy? Watch this. He gives out the winners and he's wrong more than he's right. He's wrong all the time. He doesn't care. He's getting paid to do it. And he asked me if I want to do it. What I say? No. That's not me, bro. I'm not doing it. Yeah, he got 3,000 people to do his shit. I could go, I could go do sports right now. Guys, I think so-and-so is going to win the next game. Who cares? Who cares what I think? I know I'm right about GameStop, though. I know I'm right about GameStop. And I'm doing it for free. And what are you, what are you mad about? That nobody wants to talk to you and, and pat you on the back? You're a grown-ass man with no friends, bro. Think about it. These people are childish. Thank you, David. You're like the Biden administration. You're like these pieces of shit who believe that if you want to vote for a Republican, then you can't be their friend. I can't be your friend. I can't talk to you. You're voting for Trump. Don't talk to me. Don't come on my channel. Block, block, block. Right? That's what you are. That's what you do. You're a woke low life who believes in pedophilia and anybody who yo are you really saying this right now this shit just got real let's hear this again Tonko let's hear you talk out of turn again let's see how many laws you want to break this is why you should write down what you want to say that's what you are. That's what you do. You're a woke, low life who believes in pedophilia, and anybody who questions you about it, you disrespect because you're woke. Right? You're asking for a lot of trouble. Right? I don't even need to defend what you just said. Party's over. Party's over. I'm going to let this video play right now. The rest of this video. I'm going to let you know how wrong you are right now. Not only did I serve my country, Tonko, something you'll never do. I was trained by the United States Army. 
I was a graduate of Caput School. And that's child abuse prevention interrogation. I actually did it at the highest level, so you want to do it. I'll protect my family, and I'll protect your family and your children just as much. For you to accuse me of pedophilia or being a supporter of it, blasphemy. And you just broke every law in the world. And I don't know what, what case I got to bring against you on the internet. You better hide this video from the world. And you think I'm fucking with you. You think I'm fucking around right now, and I'm not. I put up with a lot of shit from the meltdown. I put up with a lot of shit in my life where you guys attack me personally at all levels. You guys go to my job. You guys deal with my, my management crew, my corporate staff. You guys are harassing them. You guys harass me in person. You guys dox my family. And now I got this accusation from you. It's unmerited and unwarranted. And it's all fun and games, and now it's complete bullshit. And if I saw you in real life, what do you think I'd do? Shake your hand? I got to be real careful what I say right now. And because you believe Ryan Cohen is going to do for GME what he did for Chewy, did Chewy go to the moon? Did Chewy go to the moon, Lorenz? And if Chewy didn't go to the moon, what makes you believe that GME is going to the moon? Because of Ryan Cohen? Because of the books? The only reason GME did what it did in 2020 or 2021, whenever it was, was because people from Reddit, people on YouTube, people rallied behind the stock and forced the squeeze. That is it. That is the only reason. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what you say. You can lie to your followers. You can say every, anything you want to say. The fact is this, that three years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, however it takes when your grandchildren watch your videos, they're going to feel sorry for you. When your grandchildren watch my videos and the videos of those who have been warning the masses about scumbags like you, they're going to say, I understand why Tanko went at you, my ranks. I understand what Tanko means when he says, take your profits, get your money. Don't listen to these scumbags on YouTube because you're biased. All you do is claim that GME is going up, going up, going up, going up. It doesn't matter how far down it grows. You want to suck GME's big, hard cock. You know, Yeah, I'll tell you guys something. I've been doing this show for a long time and um, make a lot of videos. And I talk about myself and my family. And you guys know, or you should know, the type of man I am, the merit I carry myself with. And if you don't, I don't care. You know, If you don't watch the show enough to know me or to get the bits and pieces you need from it, I realize that individuals like this are deployed upon me to trigger me, to get me to say something, to do something. A platform with no following, a platform with no views. My grandkids will never see that video. One, I don't have grandkids. To assume that I would have some soon, who knows? But the chances of them finding that video are slim to none, and when they do find it, what happens when they find your grandchildren? I love everyone. Everyone that supports the channel supports me for the information I put out. I realize that I am I have to be the biggest sponge in the world to absorb all everything they want to pour onto me.
when a man would never say it to your face, you ain't got to worry about it. I'm letting you know right now. My address has been put across the world on the internet. You know where the fuck I live. Walk up, say that shit to my face. They would never. They're trying to get me to say something, trigger me, to shut me down. The self-reflection of the comments that this individual just made is mind-boggling. I will. I will no longer play one video of his on this internet, on this computer, on this platform. I will never watch another video. I don't care of the faceless and baseless comments he makes, guys. Don't show them to me. Don't tell me. You can't trigger me this way. I realize there's a lot of people out there that hate me for giving out the right information. You're not going to get me. Good try, though. Anyway, guys, um, Discord's still open. You guys want to join the chat, join the show. You guys have anything you guys want to say, I appreciate it. Um, I realize, you know, lines were crossed right there. Um, like I said, it's always fun whenever it's attack, attack on both of her things that are factual, you know. Make fun of me for having a lisp, but make fun of me for having a widow's peak. Um, make fun of me for all the reasons you want to, but to say what was said, I've got to figure out what, what I can do. I mean, aside from report that, that video, I definitely won't be doing that. Um, and I don't need everyone to report it to. I don't need mass reporting. I don't need it to be like a gang effect. Um, and I'm, not, I'm just telling you, I don't operate that way. I'm not here to lynch ideas. It's, it's wrong. It's just wrong. The video was 23 minutes long, and we were only at the 13-minute mark. Something like that before I closed it out. I don't even know what, what mark we were at. So um, I'll never listen to this video again and or the people associated with the video. Um, you know, for a healthy conscience for myself to um, melt down crew, I will no longer be going to your website. Um, I just don't need it. Like, I really just had a thought right now in my head. Because I'm making this video and I'm talking and this guy's talking out of his ass. I was just like, these guys aren't worth my time. I said that before. But the more outlandish it gets, the more insane it gets, you realize that it's they're falling to pieces, not me. So I couldn't believe that. I couldn't believe the comment that was made. I mean, I can believe it. But I got to go to bed soon. I got to go to work. And you know, I always, I always got a little upset because he would be like, who works at night? And, you know, who works at the, you know, understand it's a 24-7 business. You know, mopping floors is, is a hard job. This guy is off the rails, yeah. His other YouTube channel just described himself. Not going to lie, Morantz is a textbook narcissist. I know because I'm also one. I think you have me confused with Rico. Like, I'm pretty reserved, man. I'm extremely, my wife would tell you, she's like, you're so reserved. And you guys just don't know that yet. Because I'm an extrovert for the show. But it's just a show. Damn, cross the line. I mean, to who? To who, Brian? Think about this, Brian. Uh, would I jeopardize my family and my well-being for that guy? No. Like, people always say this, you know, if I ever saw him, you know, I, I'll punch him in the face. No, I wouldn't. Why would I hurt my hand? Why would I go to jail for someone? This is someone who's trying to trigger you. And when you have some, the guy, remember, have you ever heard this guy go like this? The guy's like in your past, they go, um, man, I don't give a F. I don't give a F, man. I don't care. I don't care. I got nothing to lose. Okay, Mr. Ignorant. <laughs> I have plenty to lose. I don't want to lose anything. So no, if I was going to defend my family or myself, then we got an issue. Then we can, then we get to popping and rocking, but. 
not nah, man. You can't you can't let kids like this get the best of you. You know, I used to play video games a lot. Um, you know, Call of Duty and WoW and whatever else we were playing at the time. Were you talking in lobbies to people? I used to just pop off at the mouth. You just say crazy shit. Just trying to trigger people. Thinking you're funny with your comeback. And and you know what? You should see me play video games now. I don't even do that. People be raging on League, and I'm just like, all right, guys, I'll see you next game. Like, what do I care? I don't care. Life's too short for that nonsense. I just tuned in. He looks like a bald alien. Well, chin up, Morantz. This guy's a loser. Yes. Our grandkids will have to play it at 5X. <laughs> on site for this. But hey, man. This dude is stupid as F. I'm done. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I know. He has no idea. That guy was vulgar. Just ignore him. Yeah. Need to rename the segment to the stream called Tonko Rants. No, don't need to do that. Rants, you are not wor- he's not worth your time. We love your honesty and integrity and how you stand up for what's right, for the right things always. Thank you. You know, shout out to um, my man. I want to get more positive right now because that really took the wind out of my sails. Um, real positive just right now with the chat and the time. For uh, I always want to give a shout out every live stream from my boy, uh, Tonko Native. Tonko Native uh, underscore 40. What did I really just say Tonko Native? <laughs> oh, man, I was closing out the window. I apologize. Um, shout out to Dynamite underscore 41, my boy. Holy hell, that was. Yeah, I'm in my brain right now. Guys, I'm caught, I'm caught a little off guard right now because. You, you take all of your um, aggression, right? And you know what you want to say, but you don't say it because you know what it will cost you. Hell no, it's not worth it. So, yeah. Shout out to Dynamite underscore 41. My boy, we're three hours into this live stream. And I'm giving you shout outs because Dynamite underscore 41 is a YouTuber. Type it in. D-A-N-A-M-I-T-E underscore 41. Dynamite 41. He's a... YouTuber about GameStop. Cool dude. I like the cat. That's the type of dude I want to hang out with. I'm sorry that you got to deal with this shit, shit like this, bro. You know where I stand. I do. Marancy, watching UFC 300 is pumping me up for our arm wrestling match. Kyle, you said it to me earlier. I don't know what you want to do. If you want to keep your arm, you keep it away from me. No one will remember his name. Correct, Tonko. Correct, Taco. <laughs> Tonko, Taco is the same thing. You don't make those accusations about anyone. That's the bottom of the barrel rap move. Thank you, Brian. Yet I wonder why he went. Uh, yet I wonder why he went to go live in the Philippines. Man, I'd leave it alone. <sighs> yeah, dude's lame as that. Fuck him. There you go. Exactly. Don't even let that bullshit in, bro. Environment plays big part of the mental game. Yeah, I know. Keep up the great work, man. Thank you so much. You're in Cali. You won't go to jail. No bail. <laughs> oh, I'm on now. We back. Ain't nobody coming. He ain't coming over here. Um, I got a lot to lose, but I definitely open a uh, uh, open hand slap that little <laughs> if I ever seen in real life. And I guarantee he wouldn't press charges. AI monitors the online video game chat now and kicks people for bad language. No way. No way. I've been on that Joe Pencil casino shit. I'll effing split your head open again because I'm stupid like that. Yo, that's too much, man. King Marantz. Yeah. Anyway, guys, what a way to end the show. Hey, I'm going to go have some dinner. Wifey's cooking. I'm playing some League of Legends so I fall asleep. And I get back at you guys. You know where I'm at next week. I'm here with the show. Marantz Rants. Marantz Rants. No, Marantz Rants. Welcome back. Thank you so much. And uh, plenty of good information. A little bit of motivation. A whole lot of truth. No financial advice. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, guys. Or what's left of it. Sunday, tomorrow. Pray on it. Pray on my downfall, punks. It's not going to happen. GameStop. Can't stop. Won't stop. GameStop. You know where to find me, millionaires. My feet up. Peace. Ah, uh, welcome to my ranch ranch. No advice on finance. Spin the wheel and take a chance. Get an NFT and a little education. The system got under tow. That knowledge is flotation. You wanna learn? Well, you came to the right place. You pump an AMC, might get slapped in the face. Get your due diligence. Know who the villain is. Don't be a sheep when the shepherd's carnivorous. So come learn, laugh, and maybe you win big. And listen up, y'all. The wheel is not rigged. Everybody get a chance in the live chat. Kyoto spin wheel. You win just like that. Retail fight pack and this retail winning. Y'all just Wait, man, this is just the beginning. All fellow symbionts, GME group singing the truth. We just chilling, infinity pool swimming.
So welcome to my ranch ranch A lot of knowledge but no advice on finance Don't even need pants You can tune in naked like Henny the Mayo Man Internet's most hated Don't wanna lose your money Then it's time for you to listen If you're ignorant Invest in AMC and Superstition The stream about ready They told us to don't dance I do what I want Welcome to my ranch ranch Welcome to my ranch ranch Welcome to my ranch Welcome to my ranch ranch Welcome to my ranch ranch Welcome to my ranch ranch